What's going on, 602? Good morning from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm Robert Walsh. And then there was one, one head coaching opening left after yesterday. The Seattle Seahawks go from the oldest coach in the league to the youngest hiring Baltimore's defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald. McDonald's defense was first in sacks, takeaways, and points per game this year. The first defense in NFL history to do so. Now coaching as it impacts the Titans, one in, one out. Terrell Williams, who had been coaching at the Senior Bowl, has taken a position in Detroit to coach their defensive line, but when one leaves, one comes in. The Titans have found their defensive coordinator. It is Denard Wilson, who spent last year uh, coaching the DBs in Baltimore, but has been coaching all around the league since 2012, coaching in Philly, New York, St. Louis with the Rams. He spent the, uh, his first three years in the league in the Bears front office as a pro scout before joining the coaching ranks. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Good Thursday morning. We call it Friday Junior here on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. We've got Ramon Foster in Mobile, Alabama. He continues his uh, Senior Bowl week down there. We've got Robert Walsh, our great producer, behind the glass. Uh, Will Bowling is out for a few days. He is actually in London. Going to see a lot of football over there. And I'm in the studio here by myself, and it is really awkward. (laughs) I won't lie. It is very, very weird. This is the first time I've ever been in here, like, with no faces staring back at me. So uh, it's definitely different. Yeah, one one woman <laughs> show, Kayla. I mean, well, welcome to the big leagues now is what right? you got to tell yourself, man. As a bunch of assistant coaches and DCs and OCs are also being welcomed to the NFL the same way. Hey, look at yourself now as the head coach of the studio. How how you feel about there that? There we go. Yeah, I mean, head coaching duties. I was the captain of my dance team for two years for my high school. We were uh, legit, too. I want to make, make sure I put that out there. So I, I like being a leader sometimes of, of – men and women so yeah this kind of feels like a, an interesting scenario today as like you mentioned we are uh, actually seeing some hires continue across the league and i think the most exciting one uh for fans here is at least they know it looks like they've got their dc um we're gonna get into that in about 20 minutes but man uh, a lot of news breaking and breaking late last night <laughs> It was. We were planning this show because we knew it was going to be yourself and me, right? And, yeah. Um, we were just like, okay, what do we put here? How do we fit there? And it was just like, look, the news is going to come. I had no idea, Kayla, and it came, I think, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, at 10.50 Central Time or something like that last night. It was after 10 o'clock, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So the NFL is a big business. What month does the NFL not dominate? Because if you look at the breakdown of it, and I had somebody bring bro, tell me about this, and it never registered to me. They dominate every single month or got something something going on every single month. And you got to think, how are we going to feel? How are we going to, you know, discuss the NFL when you got the Super Bowl next week? We don't even have a football game really this week because the Pro Bowl ain't a football game no more. You know? Yeah, no, it's not. So, so we get breaking news, Kayla. That's what we get. It's lovely. I'll tell you that much. There's never a dull moment. Uh, Of course, uh, never a dull moment when we're brewed up by 8th and Roast. Uh, Locations everywhere now, I feel like, in Middle Tennessee, 8th Avenue, Charlotte, uh, two in the airport. They've got one right over here in Midtown, 8th and Roast, cultivating community by the cup. And you can find your favorite retail bag also. If you don't want to get some, you can brew some at home. Kroger, Whole Foods, they have it at Publix now as well. And we always love you to join the conversation. Always call us 615-737-1045. Or you can just join in on the stream because I feel like it's been popping lately. We've got YouTube. We've got Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. Twitch, please. Exactly. And we love the conversations, people. So go ahead and give us your thoughts today as we get through 
a pretty loaded lineup. Uh, we're going to talk about the Denard Wilson hire at 620. Also, there's a few more leftovers on this staff. Do we see any of them staying? We'll figure that out. Plus 720. We've got Coach Mack. I actually think he's going to join you in studio down there. Uh, he is actually going to call in because they, is he? Okay. him, Mike Keith, and Rhett are still doing some OTP interviews this morning. Perfect. Uh, going after a few more prospects that we missed yesterday. Uh, so some really good conversations with the prospects down here. Man, some very personable guys. You can tell in this era of football – these guys are equipped with how to speak to the media, their expectations, and how they want to go about uh, being young pros. Uh, spoke to some really unique guys yesterday. I was I was very fascinated with some of the conversation that we had. Hey, Moan, I got to ask you a question. Is there a wider wide receiver name than Lad McConkey? Oh, oh my gosh, I'm glad you said that because mm. he's been um, killing it down there, right? Yeah. He has had a few good days, man. I think every day he's been somewhat consistent, man. Really has. Um, only other, uh, only other name that that fits that bill, man, is an offensive lineman from Houston. I think it's a black guy too, Patrick Paul. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you give that guy a call two names, <laughs> two first names in one. Credit score eight fifty. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but Lad McConkey, I even asked Mike Keith. I said, Mike, because we were discussing him and how he's been doing. And to your point, Bert and Kayla, he has been he he's been holding this on. And we talked about him uh, in the upcoming OTP uh, episode that's gonna um, come out Ooh. also. And and what's what's crazy is after the episode, I said, Mike, I said, maybe just call me an amateur here, but Lad can't be his only, you know, that, that can't be his first name. He said, well, Ramon, he is from Georgia, right? I was like, Truth. Fair, fair enough. I, I got to see if he's even from Georgia, uh, which is I've never heard anybody call somebody Lad. I've called people. Hey, young Lad, how's it going? You know, like young gentleman. Yeah. Never and it's L-A-D-D, right? I mean, it's so, L.A.D. Huh? Yeah. So that lad is his middle name. His first oh. name is Andrew. Andrew. Oh. So we could have a Buck McConkey here. If we really want. Now that's to. an interesting name. I mean, <laughs> is that Buck's son? Buck McConkey. <laughs> do Buck? Yeah, it might be, Jeez, man. Louise. Can, can we give Buck a child out <laughs> here? Right? Where, where were you in uh, Georgia in 2001, <laughs> Buck? Child at 10 years old. <laughs> you know what I'm that's saying? scary. I mean, hey, with a weight buck, never mind. Never mind. We'll leave it alone. We'll leave it alone. Um, so, yeah, we'll get into all the Senior Bowl action. I, I always enjoy – look, I love being down there watching in person, but it's fun to watch it on TV too because you get some different um, angles. They've got, like, Terrell Williams mic'd up. So there was an interesting moment yesterday with a LSU player and Terrell Williams um, – when they were doing the, I believe it was the one-on-ones with the line, uh, and the LSU player ripped off the helmet, and Terrell Williams like took him to the side, and they actually got it on mic, like yeah. mic'd up, and it was an incredible teaching moment. Like I really was amazed that they took all of that teaching moment, but it was really cool to see uh, Terrell Williams now that is going to be heading up to. Detroit so yeah, really big opportunity also. yeah um Kayla do you did you hear what some of the the audio was that yeah. they actually broadcast that what did he tell him like yeah. you got to be a better pro than that or yeah what, I mean he was like it? you're a grown man and you know to be a pro you have to know how to be disciplined I'm trying to he's like I'm trying to help you and the way that Terrell does the coaching it's very calm but it's very direct. Mm. And I think that's why we've always heard in the past couple of years, especially here with the Titans, why we've heard so much about him in a good way. It's like how he teaches, right? How it comes across. But he's straightforward in his message, but he does it in such a caring and loving way, Ramon. Yeah, yeah. So Still stern. I mean, yeah. it, 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 young fellow who snatched the helmet off, you say he's from LSU? Yes. Well, guess yes. what? You snatch somebody's helmet off in the NFL <laughs> with the way guys feel about you, one, uh, they will correct you themselves. So Coach T can probably <laughs> let them know, hey, this is cool with what you're trying to do at this All-Star game, but discipline and knowing your teammates, because those are the guys you're going to be going against, they will absolutely kick you in the face if you yep. do something like that. And when you do that type of stuff to – you ruin practice because more than likely a fight, right. a scrum is going to break out. You know what I'm saying? 
And that's what he said. He's like, we love the physicality. We want that's that. what we want. But you've got to make sure to tailor that, right? Especially in an environment well, like that, where the biggest thing, Ramon, that he said, do you know how many GMs are watching you right now? Yeah. Do you know how many general managers just saw what you did? Mm-hmm. And that's I'm sorry, in this day and age, that's one little scratch. At yards come as a premium in the NFL, especially you give somebody a new uh set of downs because you, you know, hands to the face. Everything yep. is more professional now. It sure is. Uh, We are also going to get to Titans free agents. They have some right now currently on the roster. Who could they bring back? We'll discuss that at 820. And then Teresa Walker, she's been digging into the whole Tennessee versus NCAA battle right now. She's got some good stuff to share. She's coming up at 920. Coming up, though, we are going to get into the Tennessee Titans' first official hire under Brian Callahan. What do we know about Denard Wilson as the Titans' new D.C.? We'll hear from him coming up next on Ramon Kalen Will here on 104.5 The Zone.
Welcome back into RK Dub on this fine Thursday morning. The Tennessee Titans and new head coach Brian Callahan have a new defensive coordinator. It's Ron Davenport, uh, Dan Graziano first reporting it last night. Yeah, we all uh, can't stay up that late. I, I will, I'll admit I was in bed by that time. I'm trying to get my sleep. Uh, but, yeah, we wake up to some exciting news. And this was obviously a guy that they had interviewed. We talked about him briefly, I think, last week. But we did. didn't get into too much detail, Ramon. Um, so, Denard Wilson completing his 12th season as an NFL coach. Um, ninth. Uh, yeah leading uh, defensive backs at the pro level, which is always, I feel like, a position that's one of the most important in the NFL, right? It's the quarterback of the defense in terms of DBs, cornerbacks specifically. Um, And he's done it with some successful teams. He spent two seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles um, as the defensive pass passing game coordinator and then the DBs coach before heading over to Burt's Baltimore Ravens this past Mm -hmm. season where – Also, a pretty good season there um, with the secondary. So, a guy that has a ton of NFL experience. He played for a short time in the league. Nothing crazy, but he has that game experience as well. What's the biggest thing that sticks out to you with this hire, Ramon? And then we're going to hear from him back in 2022 when he was asked about potentially becoming a D.C. one day. I think uh, looking on both sides of the ball, Kayla, uh, I think you coaches ran uh, uh, all these guys in the front office with the Titans are recognizing that, look, you have to be able to relate, communicate, and be able to have relationship with your players. The ages of these coaches, to me, I think is very significant. The, the, the player is getting younger and younger. The communication skills, you have to be up on that at, at a high level to be able to speak their language. Not necessarily that you have to lower yourself down in them, but communication is huge. His age, man, of 41, and Coach Callahan being 39, almost 40 at this age, too, lets you know what they are as a as a franchise. Now, they're, they're forward thinking to get to here, too. What this hire says to me is, Kayla, they went after somebody that eventually will probably end up being a head coach themselves. Yeah. And when you look at it like that, and the, the places that he interviewed at, it was not like the throwaway places, not like they didn't need his help and assistance. And when you look at him not being the specific play caller, the D.C. Of, of, of any defense he's been a part of, you just said it. DBs have to know the defense the same way a quarterback knows the offense. You have to know how to communicate. And, of course, you look at the staffs that he's been on and where he uh, was where he was um, recruited at to be uh, interviewed this, this offseason cycle. The Rams, New York Giants, and Green Bay Packers all had interest in him, and the Giants also brought him in for a second interview. So you're not getting some regular slappy here. Mm-hmm. You're getting somebody that is highly regarded by his players, the staffs that he's been on, and the work that he's done around the league. Uh, I know a lot of people say, well, we want the older guy. Well, he's also been said he's a guy that's been t- uh, tutored and mentored by Todd Bowles and uh, Greg Williams. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like you're getting somebody that's just thrown to the wolves. You're getting somebody to understand what his schemes and philosophy will will be, how he wants to craft an offense, I mean a defense, and how they're going to play down here in Tennessee. I'm telling you, and I said it uh, the other day, the conversation that we had with Chad Brink was very insightful on what they want and will demand out of players too. Yeah. Now, if that may end up uh, dropping – tomorrow or early next week to really break down why this hire to me makes sense. Um, Kayla, there's a lot in this hire that I love and it's a lot that I think you'll see maybe not immediately. Um, And there will be bumps and bruises along the road. uh, But you got a guy that a lot of other people wanted and has proven himself in numerous defensive schemes um, and held his own as far as his secondary unit was, um, as far as his secondary unit on the field because of the accolades that they got, the players that got paid under his tenure, just track all of that stuff. And you know that this guy know what the heck he has going on. Yeah. You've heard a lot of good things about him, especially from his players. Uh, The Ravens pass defense under Denard Wilson this last year, ranked six in the NFL. Of course, we all know Kyle Hamilton. He earned first team all pro honors um, under a guy like this. Uh, also fellow safety Geno Stone, seven INTs, ranked second in all 
of football this past season. So definitely a guy who's liked by his players as well. And I thought this was interesting. You mentioned, Ramon, there's a uh, snippet from last year in 2022, actually, from Denard Wilson when he was asked about potentially having an opportunity to be a DC one day. And this is what he said. Think about if you became the best coordinator, how you do things. Yeah, I, I mean, um, Look, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've been around some great defensive coordinators, in my opinion. You know, I've been groomed by Greg Williams. I've been groomed by Todd Bowles, um, who are very good in this league, and they're very thorough. Um, so, you know, I've been, to, I've been tutored by them. I know how to, to run a ship. I know, you know the responsibility. So with, if the opportunity presents itself, I'll be more than I'll – be, I'll be ready for it. But I'm here where my feet are, all right, and I'm just trying to be the best defensive back coach that I could be. Yeah, I, I feel some intensity and some passion <laughs> under what he was saying there. Yeah. But the point being made, Ramon, he's learned under some really good, good DCs. He has. And that was from um, his hire with the Eagles. There we go. Um, and he was having a conversation with them then. That was his hire with the Eagles. I know this. Todd Bowles know how to call it. Uh, mm. Go back mm -hmm. go back to this year, Tampa versus the Titans down there. Uh, look at the way that game somewhat set up and how he tormented uh, Will Levis and how they got after him as a defensive front. You look at the front also and how he goes after guys. You're probably going to end up getting a big body up the middle to help out Big Jeff. Look at uh, Vita Vea, right? That's right. a Bowles guy, if I'm not mistaken. Then you look at Greg Williams. Greg Williams, we know his background. We know a lot of people have been all over the idea that you can get him or Jim Schwartz or something like that, right? Well, we're in the same wheelhouse as far as the style of defense that you're going to end up playing here in Nashville. And that's why I think it's more unique than anything. If, if you have Brian Callahan, who's a guy that you believe can call it, develop, and, and have the ability to to make you a forward-thinking offense. One of those not in the middle of the road style of teams. Well, you got to be able to have somebody on the other side of the ball that's doing the same thing defensively. I've said time and time again, I, I love where this franchise is. When you let mm -hmm. go of Rabel, um, that sucks for him. I don't ever want to minimize a guy losing his job. That is a bad thing. I'm not trying to make it seem like that's a bad thing. But when you see, like that's a good thing. But when you see the moves that's being made, you see the conversations that's being had, and you see the results of it in the hires. You're getting people that other people wanted, and other teams want it back. Other players have spoke highly of um, the conversations that they've had with players that they've coached up. This isn't just a blind hire. Um, you got to be excited for this. Now, again, I'll preface all that, or I end all that by saying this too. It may take a cycle or two. You're going to start seeing, uh, hopefully, the structure of what the defense can be. If you get uh, Denard Wilson and Brian Callahan and they move these teams up offensively and defensively as far as the rankings, the interceptions, I've seen people in the f &M Bank chat say getting after the quarterback sacks. Mm -hmm. you, you look at Denard Wilson and where he's been at, Baltimore and Philly are places that get after the quarterback. Now, here's another unique thing for me, too. I know the Titans just lost um, – Coach uh, defense of coach Terrell, Terrell Williams, Williams. Yeah. but here's the unique thing about it: Denard Wilson has worked with a very good, I'm talking about monstrous and highly respected uh, defensive line coach and Tracy Rocker. Um, if you look up Tracy Rocker, mm -hmm. you understand who the heck he is. Okay, he uh, one of the Kumar best Rocker's defensive Papa. line. Yes, yeah, Kumar Rocker's father, man. And before Kumar Rocker was ever a thing, mm -hmm. uh, Tracy Rocker was one of the best D-line coaches in all of college football and the NFL He was also. at Auburn, right? Yes, he was. Uh, also, college. Uh, he's a member of the College Football Hall of Fame, yeah. too. So, 30-year vet. So, when you have a guy like Denard Wilson uh, working with a guy like uh, Tracy Rocker, here's the thing. I always say this. Most coaches will tell you, rush, meaning the front line and linebackers, and coverage, the back end, work together. If you have a young fella like Denard Wilson that can that's able to communicate and get same and similar type of production as uh, Tracy Rocker did, then you got something. Now, there's, there's communication, there's wisdom, there's uh, game planning that have to happen when you look at the front line versus the back end of the defense too. So again, I just want to reiterate again: you're not getting a, a, just a slappy when it comes down to yeah. these hires. This is very much thought of, uh, thought out. When you look at how they're trying to craft this team moving forward in this 2024 and beyond season.
Uh, two things that I think can't be understated enough about the Denard Wilson hire. One, when you look at the Ravens last year, they were very healthy on offense and defense, but the mm-hmm. one place that they were really were struck was the secondary. And six new faces across cornerback and safety that he had prepared. Ronald Darby, Rocky Sin, uh, Demarion Williams, Jalen Armour Davis, all of these guys wow. and how well he had them prepared to play. Whether they were veterans or rookies, uh, uh, UDFAs or draft yep. picks, he had all of these guys ready to play when, we, when they needed someone in the secondary. The other piece of it is the time he spent before he was a coach – in the front office with the Bears. So not only does he understand the coaching side of it, what he needs from his players on defense, he understands the scouting side of it, what general managers are looking for. Does this guy fit with us? Could this guy fit in our scheme? Which will be imperative going into this first draft of this rebuild where there are limited draft picks, less room for error. You have to hit on these. And having a guy who knows what you need can speak volumes for a draft. Really good point there, Robert. And Mm -hmm. I, I also think it's interesting he actually has ties with Rand Carthon as well during their time together with at the time I think was the St. Louis Rams technically. So there is definitely um, familiarity there, maybe not yeah. with Callahan and him directly, but definitely with Rand Carthon. And I wanted to bring this up. Do you guys remember when Brian Callahan was asked about what type of defense are, are you looking to bring in here? And the first thing that Brian Callahan said is – I'm looking for a D coordinator that will make things difficult for an offensive coach or an offense in general. And that's kind of what he did. And plugging Sam Phelan on this, he put this stat out from A to Z Sports. Callahan's Bengals averaged just 176 passing yards in two games versus Denard Wilson's secondary this past season. So I thought that was an interesting little nugget. Just knowing that is exactly what he's looking for. He wants to have a D defensive system that's just going to be the toughest on an offense. And we'll see that actually start to form here, Ramon, in the next few weeks. Oh, no doubt about it. Uh, and, of course, um, you got to have to mention again the fact that Denard Wilson was also sought after um, by the Rams, the Giants, and Packers. Again, this isn't like this is, you know, the 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 leftovers, you know, from two nights before. Mm-hmm. This is a guy that a lot of people have said will eventually be on the same trajectory as D'Amico Ryan's, and, and and I guess that also goes to the same conversation too. Um, when you when you look at head coaches, right, or when you look at the offensive coordinator, a lot of people care about the OC, right? Yeah, uh, and, and rightfully so. And I think that's why. It's also important to note that that's why Coach Callahan is saying, I'm going to call the plays. At least we have something steady about it. If you can keep, you know, everything in-house as far as um, the offense and protecting the quarterback, most times the defensive guys are guys that you can somewhat find another. I've seen in in our F&M Bank chat, a lot of people uneasy about Coach Terrell Williams leaving. And I'll say this, opportunity presents itself to him, too. In order for him to have left, it probably is a conversation, probably higher pay. Uh, he probably knows uh, the head coach up in um, in Detroit as yep. far as that goes and familiar with him. Also, Coach Terrell will be fine. And I'll say this, too, there are some really good defensive line coaches in the NFL. Um, you will find a guy. And considering what Denard Wilson knows and how long he's been around, there has to be a guy that he wants. And th- the last thing before I pass it back to you is this, Kayla, is as veteran, as big time as a guy like Jeffrey Simmons is, I would almost think Jeff probably had a you know a question to ask about the guy that he wanted, the style of uh, defensive coordinator that he wanted, and also has some input on what they would want, what Jeff and the defense would want from a defensive line coach, too. So these mm-hmm. aren't blind hires. And the times in which we ended up changing um, offensive line coaches in my playing career, Coach Tomlin did ask us, what are, you, what are you guys looking for? You know, what do you expect? The expectation of, you know, pleasing the players, because that does matter, speaks volumes, or at least the style of coach that right. they want. So this isn't a blind hire or uh, players have some, have probably had some input on this because as a former player myself, we had some input in the type of guy that we wanted also. Yeah, and I think it's very important, especially with the leaders on this team, Jeffrey Simmons being the most important leader that remains uh, on this squad here this upcoming season. 
Uh, you had mentioned Terrell Williams. I, I think it is a, a step up because he's also going to be the run game coordinator there. So he's going to get some chance to uh, put more on his resume, possibly than becoming a head coach in years to follow. So getting a little bit more well-rounded in this position that he's going to be taking on. That leads me to this question really quick. There's not much remaining from this past coaching staff, okay? Because we're seeing Terrell Williams get hired here. Um, on the offensive side, it looks like they're going to, at least right now, maintain running back coach Justin Au- I think it's Otten there. I always Outen, pronounce yep. it. Yeah, I always pronounce it wrong. Um, DC Shane Bowen. We got that report from Paul Kaharski uh, that they were maintaining or retaining, I should say, him for now. But now it will be interesting to see what happens with that because I don't think he'd take a lesser role on this team um, other than being defensive coordinator. But you never know. Safety's coach Scott Booker is still there. I think he's a really good coach. He's done some good things with the safeties for the Tennessee Titans. Could he be a guy that they keep? Uh, Defensive pass coordinator DB's coach Chris Harris is still on this roster. And defensive quality control coach Lori Locust, right now at the uh, Shriners Bowl in Texas, she has really connected on a different level and in a different way with players, um, kind of helped Harold Landry get back on track in terms of coming back from the injury. Uh, he said a lot of great things about her. Do they keep a gal like her too, who I think adds some you know, diversity, some different thinking uh, to this team? What do you think? Any of those guys you want or gals you want? Uh, the thing with me on, on, on that staff is does it fit their work as far as what they're going to be expected to do? Um, I know it was probably a little bit obvious for Coach Terrell Williams to leave because I felt like him and Vrabel's connection was probably a little bit more of loyalty than almost anything. You got to think Vrabel has been one of those guys with Coach Williams to really push him to the forefront, giving him head coaching duties in the mm-hmm. preseason and the way he's operated throughout the season with the guys somewhat trying to prepare Coach Terrell Williams for those moments. It's it's hard to retain everybody in these uh, hirings and firings, Kayla. Uh, My my mindset is this. Keep your resume hot when it comes down to this type of stuff. And I I fully do understand and get why Terrell Williams would take a different job. But um, he's highly respected. We'll see what else happens. I'm hesitant to say who will stay, who will not stay. Uh, Not much left. has Shane uh, left? I, I missed if you said that or not. No. I think, Bert, did you tell me that Shane is still here, Shane Bowen? Yeah, Paul Kraharski reported, I think this past week, that he, for now, was going to be there until they figured things out. But now they've hired the D.C. So it yeah. will be interesting to see if they do let him go uh, because I don't see him taking a, a position under a coordinator here. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. see. All of his work is fluid, and uh, Nashville's a hot spot to be at, so if somebody's offered a job, I'm more than sure they will. Yeah, it's a good spot to be in right now. Looks under a really uh, young staff right now, too, so that's exciting. Okay, so when we come back, it looks like one of the longest tenured coaches in the NFL is back for a 46th season. Mm. Mind-blowing. We'll reveal who that is and why he can't call it quits. Plus, we'll take your phone calls. That's coming up next on Ramon, Kayla, and Will here on 104.5 The Zone. It's Ramon Foster for United Structural Systems. And when it comes to large home repairs, a lot of time we homeowners pretend we don't see the warning signs. We are afraid of what we're going to hear. This is especially true with waterproofing, foundation repair. It could be something big that needs to be fixed right away or maybe a small problem now that will become bigger later or nothing at all. Bottom line is we don't know and we certainly don't want to be sold something we don't need. What we need is a peace of mind. United Structural System is the company to give you that, okay? So if you do have some foundation repair or waterproofing work done, you always have a peace of mind knowing that USS provides honest diagnosis and stand by their work and warranties. This is huge, by the way, too. So USS is based right here in Middle Tennessee. They are members of our community, and USS 
been in business for 25 plus years and they aren't going anywhere. This is who you want doing repair work. And this is who you want to call if you ever do need to use those warranties that they have for you. And that's because homeowners trust USS, keeping homes dry and stable. USS serving Middle Tennessee, Southern Kentucky, Western Kentucky, and Northern Alabama. You can reach them online at USSTN.com or call them 615-488-7855.
Let's go. We're ready to go here on Ramon, Kayla, and Will here, here on this Thursday. Uh, Friday, Junior, is what we like to call it. Because it gets us more excited for the weekend. And that's what yeah. we want to do for all of you out there driving in your car in traffic today. Drive safe if you're out there. We've had some sunshine here, too, as well in Nashville. I know a little bit of it down there in Mobile for you. Ramon is down in the studio as he continues to give us the great Senior Bowl coverage. Lots going on down there. We've talked about the new defensive coordinator not made official yet but uh several reports out denard wilson becoming the new defensive coordinator the first hire under brian callahan and let's go to the phones real quick to see what you guys think scott in goodlitzville joins us scott what's up good morning you all thanks for taking my call just a quick question on your thoughts um a lot of times with these with, with the with former uh coaching staff they didn't like try to di- try different things you know, they, they put Skaronski at guard, left him there. A lot of us feel like, you know, even though he has the short arms, Ramon, that he probably is a better left tackle. Um, and, and maybe this coaching staff would use, you know, techniques and things like that to make the players better. I was thinking about somebody like, I know he hasn't been healthy, but he may get a good a, a new lease on life. One of the guys that I want to that I root for is Caleb Farley. And I've been saying for two or three years that, he has the body of a safety. You want to think about, you know, Denard Wilson and how he would move guys around and play in different positions. A guy, a Kyle Hamilton, you know, being a safety but being up on the line and being a disruption and, and thinking about somebody like Caleb Farley stepping into that role. I want to see what you guys uh, thought about that. I'm going to hang up and listen. Thanks, Scott, so much. And, you know, that's a good point. And we still don't know exactly – in terms of the health of Caleb Farley, he he returned to practice the last few weeks of the season. But I know, and he's told us this firsthand, there is a nerve in the back. It's not the back per se. It's a nerve in the back that has prevented him to, from maybe, you know, being able to be in game action. Maybe that will, you know, continue to heal and you could see some development with a guy like Denard Wilson now as the D.C. What do you think, Ramon, on just changing things up? And it's it's almost feeling like there's like a fresh leash uh, uh, leash on life or leaf on life. What do you want to call it? For Caleb, that is? No, just in terms of the staff. Like, it's just going to be like new ideas and, and yeah. it's just it seems fresh. Yeah, everybody's been evaluated right now. As soon as all the coaches are in and, and they set their standard on what they want, everybody's going to be evaluated. And I think evaluated fairly, too. When it comes down to Caleb Farley, to me, one, to your point, Caleb, he's going to have to be allowed to uh, – he's got to be out on the field. He's got to show he's capable of playing in those schemes and the demands that his body can take on the wear and tatter is took like he's had a lot of bad stuff just on and off the field too so watching that for him is going to be major when it comes down to Peter Skaronsky Brian Callahan's come out and said that he thought he was a guard coming out too so I don't know what the personnel is going to look like for this team as far as the draft as far as free agency either but Caleb Bronco head coach Brian Callahan has said that publicly before that interview Mm -hmm. is out there I think we've played it on our show already this year too, Kayla. So it will be a fresh canvas for a lot of folks, but they will look at what you have done, what you hadn't done, um, the medicals that you have, and and what they also think of. You got to think, these coaches aren't coming in from college. They're coming in from the NFL and probably have some of the same evaluations that other teams have had about you. It's just that when it comes down to Caleb, I don't know if it was just the Titans that like Caleb. Caleb has a lot of potential. But Caleb also has to stay out there on the field to get that potential shown. Yeah. New lease on life. That's what I was looking for. Still early, guys. Let's go out to AG in Nashville on the defensive coordinator hire. AG, what's up? Yeah, yeah, on the offensive side of the ball, it's like we want a quarterback whisperer, you know, a pass game type of coordinator. So on, on the defensive side, what's the most important Oh shoot! His question. Oh, AG, you his dropped question out, man. knocked out. It's okay. I talked okay. to him. I talked to him before he got in. Uh, Perfect. So what, he, what he's talking about is on offense for an offensive coordinator. Everybody wants a quarterback whisper, but on defense, what what are you looking for in a coach? Mm. What's the what's the moniker that you want? Do you want a pass rush specialist? Do you want a secondary specialist? What's the most advantageous position coach to select as your defensive coordinator? Ramon, you touched on this a little bit about twenty yeah. minutes ago, but I, I from front to back, it's important. But what would you say? 
Uh, probably secondary because they see the entire defense. That or middle linebacker. Somebody has experience with that. I'm not saying a D-line coach doesn't, but uh, I'll say this. There's not many D-line coaches and offensive line head coaches, are there? No. N- not really. So it's, it's, it's somebody that fully understands the full env- envelope of how to run the defense, what's the expectations of it. Like I said before, looking at how the back end of the defense, the secondary, and the D-line work together. And also, you got to say this too, the secondary is also a position that has to communicate directly mm-hmm. with the secondary. We heard Wesley Woodyard last week, correct? Speaking about yes. Malcolm Butler and how they had to communicate with him and how the secondary had to communicate with the uh, linebackers. So I think having a mind of a secondary player uh, is, is is something that you should take advantage of if you have the opportunity. And it seems like Denard Wilson is that guy right now for the Titans. I, I like the hire from everything I've read up on it. Um, again, I don't know who you're expecting to go get. I know a lot of people wanted Jim Schwartz and you mentioned all kind of other things like – maybe what you think is good for you is not what you need. I love okay chocolate. Okay, but I don't need it like that. All right, Kayla? Like, I know, Kayla, you, you <laughs> love to shop for clothes all the time, don't you, Kayla? Sure. But sometimes you got to put the card down a little bit, right? It's like, you yeah. know what? Not I don't right have now. the money. I, I can't spend and it. I, I know Bert loves, okay? I know Bert loves. What do I his love? Ravens. I know you <laughs> love, okay? Your Ravens, okay? Or you, a good car. But you're not out here buying a Maybach, are you? I wouldn't no. tell you if I was. You keep that in the garage. I ain't paying take taxes on night. none of this. <laughs> right? Oh, goodness gracious. No doubt, man. And I know what you love, Bert. You, you you love good Lego sets. There you go. Well, then there you should you talk go. to Travis because he's got, like, a stack of them that I said you have to put together. The new now. Ones, the new ones that are out, man, are sick. They, yeah, they, all, even got my mom cool. in on it, man. They're pretty see, cool. We're building shelves for ours, so it I should be that. interesting. Really? I love yeah, that. Yeah, we're going to get to it. We're going to buy some new shelves, and he's building them. So I said, you, you build them, I'll put them up. You love Crocs too, Bert. We had to stop you from buying those boot Crocs. <laughs> don't, right? don't get me started. I was looking at another pair last night. Oh my God. I went home. He's addicted to I, them. I know we got to get out of here. I went home and I was wearing these ugly ass brown Crocs I got on, and my mom said, uh uh-uh. uh. And she hid them from me. She wasn't going to let me have them back. For uh, real? Her. The women in my life do not support my Crocs. Got to have addiction. a little style. Right. We're keeping, need, we're keeping you in line. I need a Cole Hahn Croc. Exactly. They yeah. need to come off with that. Well, yeah. we got one hour down here already on Ramon, Kaylin, Will. Uh, Coach Mack, he's going to join us in 20 minutes down in Mobile yeah. to talk about what he's seen. But first, we'll check in around the league. All but one team has its head coach for the upcoming season. Who hit the home run higher? We'll discuss it next on Ramon, Kalen, Will here on 104.5 The Zone.
What's going on? 701. Good morning from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm Robert Walsh. And then there was one, one head coach opening left around the league. The Seattle Seahawks go from the oldest coach to the youngest coach, hiring Baltimore's defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald. McDonald's defense was first in sacks, takeaways, and points per game this year. The first defense in NFL history to do so. Now coaching as it impacts the Titans, one in and one out. Terrell Williams, who has been coaching at the Senior Bowl, has taken a position in Detroit to coach the defensive line. But the Titans did find their defensive coordinator, Denard Wilson, who spent last year coaching defensive backs in Baltimore, has been coaching in the league since 2012, coaching in Philly, New York, St. Louis with the Rams. He also spent three years in the Bears' front office as a pro scout before joining the coaching ranks. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5. The Zone. Welcome in to a Thursday edition of Ramon, Kayla, and Will. We call it Friday Junior here on this show and always brewed up by 8th and Roast, locally owned and operated by lifetime friends turned business partners. They've designed the local shops around Middle Tennessee as a way to feel welcome, connected, part of the community. You can also find your favorite bag at, you know, the retail stores around here, Publix, Whole Foods, uh, Kroger, they're all over the place now with four locations as well. Alongside, and I should say far from, but also alongside on the uh, stream is Ramon Foster. Yeah, yay. And we've got Robert Walsh behind the glass making it all happen. Sleepy Ramon Foster. <laughs> wow. I heard Wait, is it A while. yet? See, Bird is Bird is now making no. uh, a new record because 7 o'clock, he's up and at him. It used to be 8 where Bert kind of came out of the shell. Oh, no. He's it, up. Well, it was that new he's, Bert, baby, that new Bert smell. Woo! <laughs> it's, it's like you put it in the car, new Bert smell. Smell like Bert Berry over here. <laughs> <laughs> Get the heck out of here. Bert <laughs> Berry. How much would that sell for? It's probably free. It's just samples. <laughs> it's just the cards that they spray yeah. the perfume on. Yeah, that's, the, that's in it. Sephora they hand you on, like. <laughs> right. <laughs> out there flicking the cards like those dudes in Vegas do. Yeah. Yes. You out here with the longest pauses uh. on the zone and everything. You got Jared Morris and f and Bank Chess saying, I thought my phone froze. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. <laughs> hey, when Will is away, I will play. Exactly. Just know that. Right? Yeah. Right? Between, between that, Bert, you know why we get new Bert smell this? morning kayla we, Bert, we got- Bert's, Bert's, Bert's old squad man is getting 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 picked oh. i'm talking about like tr- like oh, apples no. off the tree i know man i know, man. Me, man. Like, I I, know. It, it, I'm, I'm gonna leave it alone because again i respect your boundaries okay Bert. i know where your boundaries are uh, okay but you <laughs> you, you can you can picked man like apples off the tree what? like they let that smooth skin we save you go man <laughs> he had the jaw of a god Good time. Oh, you're going to just put Pete, Pete Carroll, John man. Harbaugh's old ass, Who's man. <laughs> Why didn't you just make him go to the front office, man? Mm. Denard's jawline was strong. Mike McDonald's was strong. They all got strong mm. jaws, man. We got slack jaws on defense now. I don't know what we going to do, man. <laughs> Them soft chins, man. What are they going to do? Why would want nobody want me, man? Hey, you Why know what's nobody want up? me? You know what's hilarious about that? So you know one of my best friends, Gerard Mayo, just took the Patriots job, right? Quick story real quick. And we have a group chat of all the recruits that was in my 2004 class at Tennessee. And uh, I got a couple other buddies that are in coaching also. And we were congratulating Mayo and stuff like that. And Arian Foster is in a oh group gosh. with us. Everybody know Arian. And Arian, first thing he says, like, congratulations, Mayo, man. He's like, I knew it was coming soon because you got that head coaching jawline. <laughs> <laughs> well, soon it turns to gray hair, so enjoy it while it lasts. He told him, he's like, the rest of y'all in this group 
Coach Chad ain't got a head coaching jawline. Mm-hmm. He was like, Mayo, you got one fit for Tennessee. If I mean for TV, I'm talking about we died laughing, man. But, Bert, you mentioning that lets me know having a jawline is a strong attribute for a head coach, man. But, Love that. But like it. I said, if you look at head coaches, it's like presidents. If you look at head coaches at the start of their tenure – yeah. And you look at them at the end of their tenure, they look like they've aged 20 years. It's like being a president. Like. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really is. I, I kind of want to put, I would not do this. I feel like it's mean. But Mike Vrabel side to side when he was hired, you know, back in 2017. And then now uh, it's crazy. Like just because of the stress, For right? Sure, but yeah. hey, the jawline, you have it when you get there. And no one can take <laughs> yeah. that away from you. Just take a lot of selfies at that point of your career. The only coaches with that ain't got a good jawline, Andy <laughs> Reed, Mike McCarthy, oh, yes. they got a jawline like a globe. Exactly. But ain't nobody mad at them either. No. And that just, you know what? They never set themselves up for, they set themselves up for, I guess, failure from the start. So they can't get uh, mad at each other. Callahan got a got a good enough strong jawline. It's going to get hardened up, I'd expect, down here, Kayla, because you said it, the, the coaching takes over it a little bit, don't it? It does. By the way, Brian Callahan, who yesterday <laughs> He broke the news on our show a couple weeks ago that he is a big hockey fan. And yeah. he actually went and did the starting lineups for the Preds last night in their last game before the All-Star break. And so uh, it, cool to see him. He was at the game. I think uh, Vanderbilt football coach Clark Lee also at the game yesterday. So that was cool. It's a um, good to friend, see. Clark, Clark Lee, too. Yeah, which yeah. didn't know that. Like, the more you yeah. know, right? But yes, the, you know. the big news. can't coach news, two teams. You know you what I mean? Exactly. Oh, Don't worry about Vanderbilt, coach. Yeah. Hey, you going to leave them behind, <laughs> right? You exactly. Just worry about the Titans. <laughs> Come on, join my staff. Actually, <laughs> yeah. um, Denard Wilson. That's the big news this morning. Obviously, Callahan's first hire uh, coming over from uh, Burt's Ravens. I'm sorry, and you know what? I'm also sorry because they also. Um, Lost Mike McDonald, their defensive coordinator, who went to my Seattle Seahawks. Pretty excited about that. Uh, but I know Bert, like we said, crying a little this morning. But that means, guys, we have all of the head coaching positions filled except for Washington. Washington. So Jim Harbaugh at the Chargers now. Antonio Pierce with the Raiders. Gerard Mayo with the Patriots. Ramon's guy, Brian Callahan, right here with the Titans. Dave Canales, who was actually Ramon's pick yeah. to get a head coaching job. You and I both got the green checks on our head coaching uh, predictions there in terms yeah. of being head coaches at some point. Raheem Morris with the Falcons, and now Mike McDonald with the Seattle Seahawks, as Burton mentioned in the open, becoming the youngest coach at 36 Is in he the just NFL. 36? Is that not nuts? He's younger. Than like all of us except for younger than me. Isn't that crazy? I'm I'm 38. Golly, I know. So that will be uh, fun. Now they went from the oldest coach in Pete Carroll to having the youngest coach in the NFL. I maybe they planned that. I don't know. But out of all of these, who do you think has the home run higher here? And I know it's it's hard to choose that (laughs) early on. Exclude the Titans. Exclude the Titans. Yeah, let's exclude the the Titans. Because we think it's a home run higher. Uh, yeah, we we do. A lot of people will point to, if you look at the way the teams are set up and what they have, it may end up being Jim Harbaugh. I biasly yeah. want to choose my homeboy, Gerard Mayo, of course. I, I'm going to take that out of it for me also, <laughs> okay? Uh, but I, I think one of the two home the home run to me, the way the team is already set up, is probably Jim Harbaugh. It is. Even though uh, I look at Dave Canales as my number one pick this offseason with what he's done, Mm -hmm. uh, Carolina's got a lot. They have a lot they got to get done, and I think they'll give them time to do it. But if we're looking at just face value, the quarterback, uh, they're building a new, I'm talking about beautiful, uh, technology advanced building out in L.A. for the Chargers, too. It's got to be uh, Harbaugh and the Chargers. I don't think I disagree with you, Ramon. And I think for the fact that he's the proven commodity, right? Yeah. He's a guy that has been in the NFL before, had success with the Niners. It, you know, you see what he did at Michigan. Yeah, it took a minute, but he did his job and won them a national championship. Now you're seeing him go back to the league and – with a quarterback in Justin Herbert, who I just feel has not even hit his peak yet. There's just so much I feel like he can improve on, and that will probably happen 
with a guy like Jim Harbaugh, who is a former quarterback himself, who yeah. kind of gets the quarterback, right? And there's a lot of things the Chargers have had for that team. They've had talent, but they've not been able to get to the next level. And I think you're right. I think Jim Harbaugh could be that guy. I think the surprise hire here, too, um, we, we haven't seen a lot out of uh, Raheem Morris. I'm interested in that. I know it seemed like a boring hire at first, but if you really dig into his background, I think they saw something in him in the in the Falcons, you know, upper management and all that, that they wanted to actually bring him back. And then I think McDonald uh, with the Seahawks, I'm a little biased, but I think that's a home run hire too if it all pans out, just considering how young he is and just what he's been able to do uh, with the Ravens. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this is all the coaches we thought were going to get hired did get hired. Of course, with Ben Johnson going back and Bobby Slowick going back, yeah. you, you also have to look at their situations. One, the longer they wait and the lo- the higher they get as far as uh, if they do well again next year, the higher their price goes, the higher the demand goes, I think they will be fine. But if you look at where they are, where their, where their feet are currently in Detroit – and in Houston, you got to almost look at uh, at Slowick and saying, why leave that position right now, right? Why leave that position in Houston? You, if he can double up with C.J. Stroud in Houston, golly, you win, okay? Mm-hmm. And then you look at what Detroit did, listening to uh, their, their coach speak about how, you know, you're not promised. Dan Campbell, you're not promised to make it back. That's one thing I will, I will forever tell anybody. And, of course, Derrick Henry said that on that Busting with the Boys podcast, too, is, you know, uh, Deion Lewis told him, you're, you're not promised to get back. Right. And I think that's 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 important. So if, if Ben Johnson think they can run him back in Detroit, even if they're saying it publicly, you don't know if you can, um, I would go back to and, 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 and strengthen my resume also. And real quick, you think – it's an Aaron Glenn to Washington situation, or I don't even know. I feel like Washington waited so long and Ben Johnson didn't end up going there or something didn't work with them there. I don't know who goes to Washington now. Yeah, me either. I, I don't Man. know what they're trying to hire or who. Me either. Um, or what they're looking for. But they, they do have mostly a basketball uh, front office now with the people that they've brought in over there. Not basketball. <laughs> they bring in but Steph Curry. They, they got some they got some people on uh they got some people in the front office now that are trying to make Washington a big time brand. So whoever they bring in has got to be something to have that same vision as them. Well there's not a lot left because they're all picked up except for them. So that'll be interesting to see who they land here in the next week or so. All right, we switched gears, and we're going down to the Senior Bowl. That's right, stock is rising for so many players. Who could the Titans be eyeing? We'll check in with our favorite coach, Coach Mack, coming up after the break on Ramon, Kayla, and Will here on 104.5 The Zone. Twitch, please. Oh, it is a big Saturday night in Smashville as the press return from the All-Star break to begin the three-game home stand. Okay, first up will be Saturday, February 10th, as they take on the Arizona Coyotes at 7 p.m. at Bridgestone Arena. You can celebrate Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Night with a special ticket package that includes a ticket and a shirt designed by a local artist. Always support local good people. Uh, but get your tickets for the game at NashvillePredators.com slash tickets.
it's hard not to kind of sway your shoulders because every time we hear this song at 720 on Thursdays, that means our favorite coach, Coach Mack is with us, and he is with us today from down in Mobile, Alabama, where Ramon Foster is as well, covering the Senior Bowl all week long. Coach Mack, glad to have you. No, oh, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good to be on with you guys. Uh, been with Ramon all week, and Mike Keith and Brett Bryan. Got a lot of work done. Talked to a lot of players. Uh, just got through interviewing a few. Uh, got up from the table uh, to come do it with you. We just had Brendan Rice sit down over here, so. Yeah, it's been it's been a really good it's been a really good week, Kayla. I'm glad to hear that. And we'll dive into Senior Bowl stuff in just a second. But I did want to ask you really quick with uh, the sources out there saying that Denard Wilson will be the next defensive coordinator for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, and I know he spent some times with the Rams. Did you ever overlap with him? Yeah, for five years. Actually. Wow. So I I know D real well. I know D very 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 well. Uh, you know uh, he. he <clears throat> You know, throughout his career, you know, have have I always touched base with D during the season. Good ball coach. Uh, you know, came up, uh, started out, started out with us at the Rams. You know, as a quality control coach, and has worked his way up. Very well respected in the defensive circles in the National Football League. Has been an excellent, excellent uh, secondary coach. Uh, they they thought that he was probably going to be the heir heir apparent. You know, when uh, they lost their defensive coordinator from the from the Eagles. Uh, to be the head coach of the Cardinals last year, he didn't get that job. You know, got got hired at uh, at Baltimore. Uh, excellent coach, really good technician, understands the game. Uh, I'm excited for I'm excited for D, and I'm excited for the Titans. When it comes to like the defensive backs coordinators, too, how big is that in terms of that position and just how much they have to know overall? With you know a cornerback specifically being kind of the quarterback of the defense. Well, I mean, he 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 understands he understands uh, how the back end and the front end tie together. As I said, I've been in meeting rooms. I've sat in his, you know, in, in his position meeting rooms, you know, for for a lot of years. Uh, been in a lot of game plan meetings with him. He he gets the game, but he he also he gets it how the back end and the and the and the front end have to tie together. I mean, that that that's extremely extremely important. Uh, he's been he's been right on the precipice of getting a coordinator job in this league. And, uh, I mean, he, he's ready for this opportunity. I, I know that. Speaking Coach of, Mac, you, go ahead, go ahead Mom. Mom. <clears throat> Coach Mack, you mentioned the fact that you know D well, Coach. As as far as his tenure around the league and how he's gone about it, Denard Wilson, he said he you know he's been tutored by guys like Greg Williams and Todd Bowles for you know s- somebody that's getting his first stab at being a defensive coordinator. What does it mean being under those guys, Coach Mack, for such a long time that he can bring to his defensive play schemes? Well, he's also with Jeff Fisher too. I mean, it, look, 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 the, and the, and the guy. The, the guy uh, is just is just a football guy, you know. I mean, you know, he he understands the game. He understands, you know, what it takes. And the other thing, Ramon, that that you know that is very very important. You do too, Kayla. Uh, it's just he he understands players. I mean, he's got a he's got a he's got a good way with players. He's very technique oriented, but he's also very very organized. But look, he he's taken he's taken, he's been with some really really strong coaches in his career. All of us, all of us that start out. You know, in, in this business, I go way back to when I did. Uh, you know, my my first start with it was with some, I mean, some Hall of Fame coaches. And it just it, it if you pay attention and sit around and 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 listen and and absorb it, it can really help you. And as I say, he he's ready. He was ready for this opportunity probably a couple of seasons ago. So I'm very excited for him. But uh, he gets it. I mean, he he just gets ball and he gets NFL ball, which is really important. And when you look at that too, Coach Mack, you got to look at a lot of people mention, you know, of course, you know, the relatively young. 41 is, yes, it is young. And then you look at Coach Callahan on the border of being 42. If you could, Coach Mack, uh, cutting your teeth in this league is not just your hand at something. Like, you got to be in those dark scouting rooms, those, uh, those, those, those film breakdown rooms, Coach Mack, to where – you're not just giving it. Can you speak on these younger guys have been in a league for double digit years so far that they have a lot of on job experience, coach? Yeah, absolutely, Ramon. It, it's different now. The entry 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 into the National Football League coaching is different than it was, say, when I started, you know, with the Chicago Bears because staffs were smaller. There you know, I was the eighth coach that Mike Dicka had on the staff. Eight. You know, they got twenty to twenty four now. 
but your entry level can come in a uh, you know a lot earlier just because your 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 staff have expanded and thus you know you may you know you may have guys 39 41 years old that got 10 11 12 years of experience and you know experience is experience if you're using it the right way and if you you're soaking it up all the way and and I've got great respect for guys that start out you know, really, because quality control is a, I did it when I first started and was a position coach. It's a hard job. I mean, it's a 24 hour job, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to do it right. But that, you know, that's, that's digging the foundation of what you want to build. And so if you, if you do that and you do it the right way, and then when you get a chance to get in, a, have your own room, you get it, get in your room, you have a chance to get on the grass with players, you have a chance to do those things. If you continue to accelerate uh, yourself, throughout all the learning process, that age really doesn't matter. Experience. You can't manufacture experience, and that's important regardless of age. Coach Mack joining us here this morning on RK Dub. Coach, transitioning to the Senior Bowl, and speaking of that cornerback position, you know, this is something that the Titans would like to add, I would think, some point in the draft. Anybody who stood out to you down there in the last couple of days, Coach? Well, guys, guy, I don't really think any of these quarterbacks – see what these quarterbacks are doing down here, you know, because, you know, Jaden Daniels clearly is not here. We know who the top two, you know, uh, you know, you know, are probably going to be in this draft. You know, these guys down here I think are jockeying for those, for those, 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 those mid-level positions, you know, as a quarterback. I think they've all had their days. They've all had their days, but there hasn't been anybody that's been consistently in, you know, the, the, the two days of practice that I've watched now – when I watch practice, and it's so, that, so that everybody understands, you can't watch everything at once when you're watching these practices. It's like the county fair. You can't, you can't ride all the rides at once. You've got to concentrate on something. The first day, Ramon and I really concentrated on the big dudes up front. We watched them yesterday. We, it was, I started watching the secondary a little bit more and the one-on-ones. We always watch the one-on-ones on you know, both, both the front and, 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 and in the back end. But the quarterback – there, I don't think, Kayla, to your question. If Sorry, I, mean, I meant uh, cornerbacks. I thought I think you heard me say, and it sounded like quarterbacks. I actually meant cornerbacks. Like Sorry, Coach. Oh, well, no, no, no. Corners, I've been all over. These yeah, guys. I thought you would. That's why I was asking you that. I'm like, the Titans are definitely looking at those corners. My bad. I think I sound like when I say quarterback or cornerback, it sounds the same. Well, okay. I could talk about anything you want to talk about, but let's go. Hey, the guy, the guy, seriously. The guy, the guy that has really helped himself, that has been consistent throughout, that came in here, you know, with people wanting to see if he could do it at this level, the Kenyon Mitchell kid from Toledo. Yep. I mean, th- this dude, th- this was, this is, a, this was a huge opportunity for him. His first two practices, I think, have been out, They're really, really good. And I, and I think he has bumped himself up. I mean, look, you can start talking about draft positions all you want, but when you watch him, you know, you watch him on the on the on the turf out there. I mean, I mean, the the, the deal about him is, is is he's consistent. He's consistent. He's long. We sat down and interviewed him personally. You know, at, 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 at the at the Titans radio table here, uh, the, the guy is legit, and he has helped himself. That now you talk about someone that stood out. He has he has stood out among the cornerbacks he absolutely has how big is it down here right now with all these players whatever they're doing you know you've got the battle in the trenches the one-on-one drills but how big is it for these guys to be able to take to coaching maybe they've never met this coach before right we saw Terrell Williams coaching up some of the guys yesterday how big is it for them to take to this coaching in front of a lot of GMs and a lot of head coaches I ask every one of them that we've interviewed. We probably interviewed 25 guys down here, and you know, say, how is it getting some NFL coaches? And and uh, and every one of them to a man, regardless of position, Kayla, say, wow, I really didn't realize that, how detailed this can be, because you know, it, it, this is a different level. It's a different level, and just the, this the exposure now. And here's the other thing too, because now they've taken they've taken members from each different staffs and brought them in here to for position coaches. They're dialed in you know, exactly to what they're doing. But there's a lot, you know, and, and, the, and these, the thing that I like is, is regardless of position, the guys can, can, can reiterate back to me what they've learned. Because one of my big my questions is, what have you learned that you didn't know about your position, you know, when you, when you came down here? And, and they can start rattling things off because, I mean, this, this is a different level of football. It really is. And the details – are, are everything because now you're not doing anything but football. And so th- that's a huge, huge point. And, and that's why, look, 
The players that are here, they're not here by accident. The league is involved with the players that are here. I mean, Jim Nagy does a great job of staying in constant contact throughout the, the, the seasons with the, all 32 personnel departments. Who would you like to see? How do you have this guy? Where do you want to see? Where do you want to look? I mean, it's a, it's a big puzzle that he has to put together because this is his draft. The, the draft of the league goes on in April, but this is he and his staff draft here. And so they, they get people that people want to see, and uh, it, it's uh, – it, the players, the players that are here are benefiting from it. Coach Mack, I'm not going to do what everybody thinks I'm going to do and make <laughs> this about the offensive line, okay? Do it. Do, do it. it. Because I, do it, do it, uh, Moan, because we sat and watched. The only thing I will say is we were watching the offensive line. And, you know, they're, they're mostly they're, – we, we sat up, you know, high in, in some nice seats where we could see everything. And uh, I just want to ask, ask your listeners right now if we could get a – uh, a GoFundMe page to get Ramon a pair of binoculars because <laughs> yes. he kept taking mine from me. Yes. I did, I did Coach Matt. I'm going to ask about the offensive line right after this question, oh, okay? Sorry. So get, go, go ahead. Get that ready, okay, Coach Matt? Uh, yeah. I am, though, looking at this, you know, the defensive coordinator that the Titans just hired in Denard Wilson. You got to look at his style and what he's going to be looking for. The D line that we've seen, I'm going to drop about three names, Coach Mack, that I think you, 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 you think highly of too. Braden Fisk out of Florida oh. State. To hey, Vondre hey, hey, Sweat just, out of Texas yeah. and McKinley Jackson out of uh, Texas A&M. Those three dudes have had a good week, Coach Mack. How about Fisk? I mean, oh uh, you know, the, the, the thing, you know, sitting with Ramon, we're sitting up high, and of course, you know, Ramon, Ramon uh, loves loves the offensive line, which he should. He absolutely <laughs> should. And he finally leaned over to me and said, "Why does this dude keep showing up? Why?" And then we interviewed him yesterday. Fantastic. Wow. Fabulous. And you can tell why. I mean, you talk about a, a guy that's geared for ball. You're very bright, understand. Uh, it, was, it was a really, a really cool exchange, you know, visiting with him. Uh, look, look, that guy, is, that guy is constant, constant motor. Sweat's one of the biggest humans I've seen. I mean, I mean, the dude is, the dude is a double wide moving down the road. I mean, it's just un- amazing. He is a true front end loader, you know, and, and he, he's just a problem. And then the A&M kid is, is, is somebody that, that I think has elevated his stock down here. So all, all three of those guys do. But Fisk, to me, just because of the interview, I guess, it would be my bias just sitting, talking with him. And, and just you, could, you, could, you didn't hear, you could feel the passion about what he's getting ready to do and the passion that he has. He understands his game, too. And he understands it, it, you know, what it's going to take to be able to be uh, violent in this league against guys that are going to be bigger than he is. I really, really like that guy's makeup. No doubt about it, Coach Mack. And on the other side of the line, man, like you said, the yo line that has been there, one of the guys that we love, Coach Mack, we also spoke a lot about too, Jackson Powers Johnson is one. Tyler oh. Guyton's another one, Coach Mack. I mean, there's a bunch of good prospects on this offensive line that can go second round. I also uh, really enjoyed um, the LSU center, Charles Turner, the third. Also, those could, those could be some second round guys that you can get. And most times you look at centers, depending on what Jackson Powers Johnson does. I don't know if it's late first round, early second round or what, but it is some good bodies here, Coach Matt. Yeah, those that, those two centers, you know, in particular, but you know, we we, we watched it. Jackson Powers Johnson. You know, now yesterday he got hurt in the one on ones. You know, left practice. I don't know what it, what that was, but he, you know, he did he did walk off, and I haven't I haven't heard any update on that. That being said, he was he was the dude that first day. I mean, and he was the dude from from the start. I mean, a guy that is that is not only not only, I mean, he's three hundred thirty four pounds. First of all. And, and and can move is really good at being able to work up to the second level is is is, is extremely extremely violent when he when he gets a double team because they're running a lot of inside outside zone down here moving people off the football I, I like he and Turner both I mean I like both of those centers and then to me Guyton is a guy that every day has gotten better that's the one question we always ask these players what are you working on because it's stacking days down here that's important for these players. And, and he's gotten better every day. But you talk about someone, and, and again, now listen, we're talking about a guy that started out, you know, as, as an H back at TCU, and then grew into a, a big man, and will be a bigger man. But he's got really light feet, light feet, long arms, and a good punch that goes a long way in that position, as you well know. Coach, you. And, and, oh, sorry. 
And, and I was going to say, not just them. Is I know those have been the very familiar names. We had a conversation yesterday with Kingsley Sua Mataia and also Tali uh, Fuanga, also Coach Mack, who are both projected to be oh. first round talents too. <laughs> How great were those guys? Yeah, I mean, you know, first of all, you know, they're 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 really good players. They're good athletes, and, and they all they all they all talk about. We ask them, well, who you, who you emulate? Who do you talk to? You know, Panay Sewell. Panay and of course, Sewell. you know that that that, that, that they, they're a really tight group. But those two are really good players, and they're really smart guys. I mean, I really enjoyed visiting with both of those. You know, as, as you did, because we both said when they got it from the table, wow, these guys get it. And so, yeah, and, and they've they've elevated their stock too. You know, they they they've they've elevated their stock, and so yeah, this this has been a good good collection of players down here at the Senior Bowl. And here's the other thing that's really helped. And again, we have nothing to do with this, but the weather has been perfect. Yeah. Absolutely perfect, you know, because I've been down here for 39 different years, and you can you can get some weather down here that it's rough. I mean, I've been where we had to go into a gym and knock people into the bleachers, you know, when we had tackling <laughs> drills because the weather was so bad. This week has been Chamber of Commerce for Mobile, Alabama. It's been perfect. Can't complain about that. I really quickly wanted to ask you about the wide receiver out of USC, Brendan Rice, because you mentioned you had just spoke with him. What sticks out to you about this guy? Well, he's a big guy. He's, he's a big. He's a big long. He's a big long guy. I mean, you can you can tell that he understands some some nuance. The thing that I just you know being very honest that he needs to concentrate more on is just is, is just is just consistent uh, consistent catch. You know, with the long ball, he's a big dude. He's, he's a combat. He's a combat back catcher dude. But, uh, yeah, in fact, I got up from the table. Mike, Keith, and, and Rhett are interviewing him right now as we speak. But, uh, again, he's down here for a reason because people wanted to see, uh, you know, him do certain things. And then the combine is going to be going to be really big for him, too. Awesome. Coach Mack joining us every Thursday to talk some ball. And this was a special treat down there in the Senior Bowl. Uh, get a good meal in there today, Coach Mack. We appreciate you. Look, we haven't been cheated on the meals. Mike Keith, <laughs> Mike Keith takes care of his crew, I promise. Yeah, I does. bet he does. See you guys. He, Enjoy it. He, they know later, all Mike. the right spots. See you, Mac. Yep. There you have it from the coach himself. And I love some of the stuff that he gave us about Denard Wilson in the five years he spent with him and the Rams. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. We'll get into that a little bit uh, after the break. Plus, I, I teased this earlier, and I wanted to bring it to you because would you believe me? If I said there were a coach in the NFL coaching now that was born in 1938, yeah, it's the truth. And we'll we'll let you know who that is coming up next on RK Dub here on 104.5 The Zone. Fellas, we finally hit the month of love, okay? And that means Valentine's is coming. Are you looking for the most thoughtful, most romantic gift for the one you love this Valentine's? Two words for you, okay? Genesis, diamonds. Maybe it's a simple pendant or an exquisite one-of-a-kind designer ring. Genesis can help you pick out the most memorable and special piece of jewelry for the occasion. And to make it even sweeter, now to Valentine's Day, whether you spend $199 or $199,000, Genesis will give, give you some chocolates, fresh flowers, and a dinner out at no charge. This is a great deal, guys. It's a one-stop shop for the ultimate Valentine's experience. When you buy a piece of beautiful jewelry, they will give you some beautiful flowers from Jenny Flores, some yummy chocolate and a gift card for dinner at ST Cake Steakhouse. So stop wasting your time. Get to Genesis Diamonds. They've got a spectacular collection of memorable romantic gifts from $199 to $199,000. And right now, they're going to throw in some chocolates, flowers, and dinner out at no extra charge. Happy Valentine's Day from Genesis Diamonds. They're located in Green Hills and Cool Springs.
Welcome back into RK Dub here on this Thursday, Friday, Junior. We are uh, ready to go this morning. Maybe it's the caffeine. Maybe it's the fact that uh, Ramon Foster is having incredible seafood down there in Mobile, Alabama, which I would say I'm a little jealous of. Um, oh, don't be. Don't big, be. big seafood fan here, man. Big seafood don't fan. Be. But uh, regardless, some really good stuff from Coach Mack, uh, not only about the Senior Bowl, but specifically his time with Denard Wilson. We're going to get into that at the top of the hour, hear what he had to say about his five years that he spent with Wilson and the Rams. So we'll get to that in a minute. But I am really excited because I did not know that there would be a coach that was born in 1938 that was still in the league coaching. And by golly, y'all, there is. Peter Schrager put on his X last night that a source tells him Tom Moore of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is coming back for his 46th season in the NFL. He is 84 years old. Oh my! I don't know what your papa was doing at 84 years old, but mine was a retired Marine and he was doing everything but coaching football. He was certainly watching a lot of it, but probably on the couch. Oh, my God. Lee, Tom Moore, is that the coach that was uh, the Peyton Manning whisperer and with the Colts also? Yes. So yeah. he's been everywhere, Ramon. Like, if you look at his resume, rightfully so, because he's been coaching since 1961 where he entered as a grad assistant, he has been everywhere. You're right. I mean, he's been with the Colts. He's been with your Steelers as a wide receivers coach. He even had a stint with the Tennessee Titans in 2012 as an offensive consultant where he has been with the Bucks as a consultant since 2019. Oh, yeah, he's been around. I remember him famously on the sideline with Peyton Manning with the uh, clipboard and talking to him and stuff like that. I think he's, uh, you say, he's with the Bucks. Uh, he is one of those coaches that wants to coach forever. At some point, you got to go start <laughs> enjoying life. I don't know if I'd ever want to coach that long. I mean, goodness, when do you ever have time to take a vacation <laughs> or – just enjoy what you worked for. I guess he may have probably 30 kids or something like that, and he's just building and stacking <laughs> for them and say, you know what, when I'm done, you guys enjoy this. Life is about enjoyment. Now, to his credit, he has, if not one, I know he has one Super Bowl. He may have yeah. others also. Um, commendable to be around it long. Four-time Super Bowl champ. Four times Super Bowl champ. Woo. Here's the other thing, too. Oh, my for God. For coaches to actually want <laughs> you to be around. There's a video right now, and Robert is putting him in our chat. Oh I want y'all to know. Oh, my goodness. That the, some old people oh age very goodness. gracefully. This oh. dude is not one of those people. <laughs> If you if you're not on the stream, you need to go to the stream right now. He is one of the oldest, ugliest, witch-looking old men. He looks like one of the meanest grandpas of all time. He's one of the grandpas that when your parents were going on a vacation that kids weren't allowed to go to, it's like, oh, you're going to stay with Papa? It's like, oh hell no, don't send me. To, he makes me cut wood. Last time I left Papa's house, I had f splinters all in my fingers. Do not make me go to Papa's house. He looks like the meanest Papa there has ever been. Oh, he my does. goodness. That's a oh great my. picture. But he's 84, no, dude. I mean, I, I'm talking in the in the Leave terms it. of the way he described it. It's to a T, like what he looks like. Uh, Tom Moore, we're speaking of, who is 84 years old and predicting to come back for another season. Well, it, it, that's fascinating because most people... <laughs> Most businesses, you get a gold boot out the front door, right? In almost every business, you hit a certain age, man, you are out of here. I wonder what does he possess and who does he know to stick around for that long? 84 years old, like at this point, he can fully withdraw from his 401k, his pension, everything at this point, man. And he's just making a crap ton of money and winning championships and, yeah. and, and mentoring other coaches, man. Everybody has a value, and that's why you, you, you don't age people out, I guess. And guess what? He's actually 85. He just turned 85 November 7th. So Jeez. even add one more year to that. It's incredible. And you know what, Ramon? If you're a consultant – at that yeah. age, and he loves the game so much. I mean, I don't know what his wife is saying about this. If he has a significant other, she's got to be, like, to the point where 
You know, hey, she's like, we got, it, we Kayla. only have a few more years watch left together. It, <laughs> watch it, Kayla. You talking about that man? Oh, that, that man's wife, like. <laughs> hey, let me talk about that man's wife real quick. <laughs> Just looking at him, he looks like his wife has those gnarled fingers. Like right. she got a wooden spoon in her kitchen that she's used to frail the hell out of some kids <laughs> reaching up on that counter. I bet she makes a hell of a soup. I bet you get in her house and it just smells incredible. She's got cookies and soup and roast cooking. That dude, that dude's got it figured out. But also, I don't know if I'd have took a team picture looking like that. I'd have said, "No, nah, oh y'all can give me the gosh. damn mystery head before I take a picture." He don't give a damn, Bert. <laughs> he's Tom Moore. He's Tom Moore. He's eighty five. He's eighty five. He needs to do man. Tom less. He needs to go on somewhere, get another <laughs> joy, figure in out a the- breakfast spot to hang out with all the other white birds. Incredible, <laughs> but you know what? Congratulations, Coach. That's pretty incredible. Born no, in nineteen thirty eight. Don't back end it now, Kayla. Talking about some congratulations. Hey, I'm just talking about his wife for uh, living. All right. You congratulate I'm not going to disrespect a papa like that. You said he was a uh, 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 coach for the Steelers. I'm thinking, when did I run past him, Kayla? Oh that was gosh. in the 1970s. I know. Come on, Ramon, man. Is that what not is nuts? You weren't you? even born, and he was already with the Steelers at that point as a wide receivers coach. Do you know what year he graduated high school? Tell me. Uh, 1957. Well, God. He got back hairs older than you, Woo-wee. Mom. Woo-wee. And with that, we wrap up job. hour two. I need a job that long, but I don't want to work it for that long. You no. God. I'm like. going to be retired by 85. Let's make that Ooh, clear. Lord. Oh, what a show it's been already. Two hours down, two more to go. Coming up next on RK Dub, our coach, Coach Dave McGinnis, with some interesting words about Denard Wilson and the time he spent with him with the St. Louis Rams. That's coming up next on RK Dub here on 104.5 The Zone. It's Ramon and Kayla here for one donation, y'all. And it is cold to a lot of people, okay? Maybe not this week, but soon again. And it must mean it's February. Your energy bills will be at all-time highs now, okay? So now's the time to replace those windows with 50% off of all-style windows and pay nothing with no interest in two full years. Now's the time to protect your family from the element. Lower your energy costs and upgrade the look and feel of your home, Kayla. Oh, yeah, and this is the time to do it. They they offer their services year-round, by the way, too. So don't think just because it's cold that they can't come out and install those windows. Average installer over 16 years of experience. And look, weather does impact your windows. Maybe you're feeling it now. Uh, those hot days, the cold nights, they can cause a crack, a cock to crack, uh, seal failures, and condensation, which you see a lot during this time of year. Window Nation uses top-of-the-line materials, including mold spray and quad max sealant. So that's the toughest against all weather conditions. They've installed over 200,000 windows over the last year. By the way, that's 40 times more than the average window company, so you know they're doing it the right way. And you can save so much in terms of these windows now, and you can also save on your energy bills. 30% to be exact by keeping the heat in this winter and the cool air in during the summertime. So give our friends at Window Nation a call. It's easy. 866-90-NATION or visit windownation.com to schedule.
8 o'clock. Good morning from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm Robert Walsh. One opening left after yesterday. The Seahawks go from the oldest coach in the league to the youngest, hiring Baltimore's defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald. McDonald's defense was first in sacks, takeaways, and points per game this year, the first defense in NFL history to do so. Now coaching as it impacts the Titans, one in and one out. Terrell Williams, who had been coaching at the Senior Bowl this week, has taken a position in Detroit to coach the D-line. But the Titans have found their defensive coordinator, Denard Wilson, who spent last season coaching defensive backs in Baltimore, but has been coaching around the league since 2012, coaching in Philly, New York, and St. Louis with the Rams. He also spent three years in the Bears' front office as a pro scout before joining the coaching ranks. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Happy Thursday morning, Friday, Junior, whatever you want to call it. We're getting closer to the weekend, and there is so much to talk about. There's never a dull moment when it comes to sports here in Middle Tennessee and around the country. RK Dub brewed up by 8th and Roast with four locations now, 8th Avenue, Charlotte, Midtown, two in the airport. So if you're on your way out for the weekend, stop by because they'll get you brewed up. 8th and Roast coffee cultivates community by the cup and you can also find your favorite retail bag at Kroger, Whole Foods and Publix. I'm Kayla Anderson. We've got Ramon Foster in Mobile, Alabama as he continues Senior Bowl week down there. And we've got Robert Walsh behind the glass making everything happen. How is everybody? I cannot believe we're already two hours down and the sun is shining. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a good day. I got a little bit more of an overcast down oh, here in Mobile. Shoot. Either I'm on the wrong side of the building, too. I don't know which one it is, <laughs> but you bragging about this dog on sunshine, and I'm like, where? Where, Kayla? But um, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Yeah. Been, the, the studio down here has been more than generous to me to allow me in here. I've walked in their trap and taken over their trap. So I, I was like gonna it. I was gonna tell you guys about how I think I've already successfully won Valentine's Day, but there's way too many snitches. Uh, snitches. No, snitches. no, there's way too many snitches that listen. Apparently, Cheyenne's got a bunch of uh, people that let her oh. know when I talk crap about her. So I'm gonna just have to say it a little louder, so maybe uh, more people will tell her. But I. Uh, are you guys familiar with the Love Sack? They make couches. Uh, they make uh, heck yeah. Uh, they make beanbag chairs, but they are the beanbag chairs are expensive as hell. You have to buy the insert, yeah. which mm-hmm. is full of like these micro memory foam kind of pellets or whatever. But then the cover is also as expensive. But you guys know me; I am a Facebook Marketplace peruser. I'm always looking for a deal. And Cheyenne, in my little office that I do all my work from, has set up like a little, there's a TV in there. She's got like a little pallet that she lays on with the cats with. So I was like, I- I'm going to get her one of these big ass uh, beanbag chairs. Saw this lady post it, $100. What? $100, wow. but it didn't have the cover. It did not have the cover. What is that about? Uh, so I, that's cool with me. That's cool with me. So you're going to buy the cover? No, yes. That. I found a knockoff on Amazon. <laughs> so Because usually the covers are like 400 bucks. I found a knockoff on Amazon for 70 So I will be taking that. But I get the daggum thing home, and Cheyenne won't even sit in it because both of our cats fell in love with it. She's like, yeah. oh, it can be for the cats. Mm-hmm. I was like, I didn't spend $100 and go to... to, to Middle of nowhere, Mount Juliet, to pick up this daggum beanbag chair for you to give it to the cat. So I thought I thought I won Valentine's Day. I thought I figured out something cool, but I, I back to the drawing board. Now you you're should. gonna still have to get the ring. Yeah, I ain't get. She ain't. I'm telling you, she gonna have to wait on Lamar, hey, man. Kayla keep dropping this ring hey, thing, Bert. Hey. Man, it won't be a surprise no more, man. You, <laughs> Do you, it, you gotta let that breathe. Trying to okay, plan like, it in there. If y'all Bert's should know, own, yeah, he's crawling at, at his own pace right now. I think y'all anyway. should know one thing about my relationship, Cheyenne. 
will be surprised when she gets a ring because she don't know she don't <laughs> she don't think she's getting it no what you, way. What are you going to be like eighty yeah, five? No, no, she would leave me oh, by boy. then. She would leave me Tom by then. Yeah. She she may be hopelessly in love with me, but she does know her right? worth. So I, I got I got a little more t- uh, links on the chain before I got to bring that ring over there. You should you should have said something earlier, man. I just gave one of those away to my niece, man. Bert, I have the love a, sacks. A huge, yeah, yeah. Stop it. Yeah, That's it. Those yeah, are That's yeah. Crazy. Those are impressive. And and I bought. Uh, we ended up. Uh, so I had a, a, a black cover on there. I was like, man, this thing's been in here for a long time. I ended up getting her a nice, fluffy, soft one, man, for my niece, Bert. <laughs> I'm sorry that you you. Sh- hey, a closed mouth don't get fed. Hey, my I dog. Ain't, no. man, I ain't worried about that. Well, I'm not friends with you because of the things you could give me. <laughs> I'm friends with you because I like making fun of your team. That's why I'm friends with you. Exactly. We love to see you guys go head to head. Bert, though, kind of losing people right now because he's had two coaches that have uh, parted ways. One to my Seattle Seahawks and the other right here to Tennessee. Look at that. You you know what's super unique, though, Bert, is the fact that you can talk openly about this lets me know that you are past the 48-hour rule. Okay, congratulations. for wel- Welcome back to Earth, Bert. I appreciate he that, man. Back. I, no more no more cigarette baths. I had, I think I had three cigarettes left yesterday, and I broke them all. Get so rid I'm, of those. I'm back off the wagon, or I'm back on the wagon. Back on the wagon. Welcome back, my brother. Yes. Good to be full, here. Full bill of health here in February, as we are <laughs> actually – in February, it's February first, and yes. guess what? The Tennessee Titans have made uh, not officially, but sources, many of them say, that Denard Wilson is going to be the defensive coordinator here, the first hire by Brian Callahan. Obviously, a guy who's had success, especially in the secondary, coming over from the Ravens, where that pass defense ranked sixth in the NFL this past season. There's been a lot of players that have come out speaking about him, specifically when he was with the Philadelphia Eagles guys. Uh, Darius Slay recently told the Philadelphia Inquirer that he actually wished wished Wilson would have been named the D.C. uh, Mm -hmm. after Gannon left last year. He said, quote, I think he would have made a lot of a difference. He was loved by us. I thought for sure he should have stayed. Well, guess what? Now he's here in Tennessee. Yes, and it's fascinating. So I'm surprised a lot of people haven't hadn't brought this up. But he was let go, it seems, after one or two years in Philadelphia, and he was ended up. Uh, well, when when uh, Coach Gannon left to take the head coaching job in Arizona, he also brought in uh, Nick Sirianni. Also brought in another one of his guys, Sean Desai, who was a chief assist- defensive assistant in Seattle and had been a coordinator before in Chicago. And they let go of Coach Denard Wilson, and it's somewhat rough with the feathers. It seemed like of a bunch of players in the room, and of course, you look at this year without Denar Wilson and it looks like that that secondary plummeted behind it Kayla yep a couple of things that was brought up in the article that Darius Slate was very open and very transparent and the stuff that he was saying about the change of those uh of the coaches they said with Denar Wilson the Eagles were number one against the pass in 2022 without him they ended up in this season 31st in pass defense. But not only just that, Nick Sirianni ended up taking away uh, pass. I mean, uh, ended up taking away duties from Desai and Matt Patricia, and it really caused a whole lot of issues in uh, Philadelphia. So when it comes down to uh, people uh, uh, just backing up how bright of a mind, how good of a coach that Denard Wilson is. You've got to somewhat look at what the players are saying, but screw what the players are saying somewhat in this. Look at the results yeah. of him at those places and without him in those places too. So very significant. I think the Titans, as it stands right now, and a lot of this depends, Kayla, upon the personnel that they employ and hire and bring in and the expectation of the guys that can take on these duties that Denard Wilson will uh, demand out of them too really good points there I think that this could really end up being a great hire uh, a young hire too, 41 years old I think it's refreshing I, I know a lot of people in the FNM bank chat have agreed it's just feels refreshing and this is really the first official hire so there's many to come earlier in the show we actually spoke with coach Dave McGinnis of Titans radio coach Mac he spent five years with uh, Denard Wilson when they were with the St. Louis Rams, who might I add also up there at that time, ran Carthon. So familiarity here, and this is what Coach Mack had to say about Denard Wilson. Yeah, for five years. Wow. So I I know D real well. I know D very, very, very well. Uh, You know, 
you know, throughout his career, you know, have, have st- I always touched base with D during the season. Good ball coach, uh, you know, came up, uh, started out, started out with us at the Rams, you know, as a quality control coach and has worked his way up very well respected in the defensive circles in the national football league has been an excellent, excellent, uh, secondary coach. Uh, uh, they, they thought that he was probably going to be the heir, heir apparent, you know, when, uh, they lost their defensive coordinator from the from the Eagles uh, to be the head coach of the Cardinals last year. He didn't get that job. You know, got got hired at uh, at Baltimore. Uh, excellent coach, really good technician, understands the game. Uh, I'm excited for I'm excited for D, and I'm excited for the Titans. When it comes to like the. So, Ramon, the thing that stood out to me there, very well respected in the defensive circles in the NFL. What's that, Kayla? Thing that stood out to me, very respected in the defensive circles in the NFL. It's a small world, and that's what you want to hear. Yeah, it is, Kayla. And, of course, you you have to be stamped when it comes down to how people view in this league, man. I know a lot of um, people here have kind of, you know, created the narrative that, you know, Coach Rabel hiring his friends and, you know, doing those types of things. And it's, you know, no outhouse type of guys that you've brought in. Um, when it comes down to how you're viewed, one thing that's apparent in this league, either you got it or you don't. And the ones mm-hmm. that don't have a good reputation, they get snuffed out. They get called out. And hearing Coach Max say about uh, say what he said about Denard Wilson was very unique in the fact that he was one of those film rats that was in dark rooms that had to earn his stripes and had to learn how to break down film, how to evaluate guys. Burt brought it up, er- brought it up earlier in the uh, six o'clock hour with us. He is a former scout. Another thing that Darius Slade uh, had to say about Denard Wilson too, was this um, one it's, it's not like you're dealing with an ego guy because whenever he was let go, he, he alluded to the fact that Coach Wilson let him know that he would have come back to just be the DB coach. Mm-hmm. He didn't have to be the defensive coordinator. And and here's where I think the the uh, hire probably handled itself. Um, Darius Slay said this, he's real good with young players. This will be a young secondary. This will be a secondary that has to grow and learn the NFL and how they're expected to play. Coaching young players require, this is what the article also says to us um, from uh, MSN.com said, coaching young players requires clear, consistent communication and connection. That is a hundred percent true, man. And, um, and, 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 and there's so much to it. We may end up tweeting this article out, but he says he wasn't a guy who just came in the room and said, this is what we do, done. He put some life aspects to it, and he was an honest dude. If you listen to all of these coaches so far has been hired, you're hearing that C word without us necessarily saying it no more, right? Collaboration. You're hearing that they're all will be on the same page. My information, Kayla, will be your information. And that's the way they're treating it inside of that building. So when it comes down to them competing in camp, OTAs, mini camp, and then the, over the course of games, it looked like it, it should be. Again, this all has to be lived out in real time. This should be iron, sharp, and shire, man. Uh, iron, sharp, and iron. Yeah, absolutely. I'm seeing a theme here starting, and it's called uh, a little bit of a development with this coaching staff, something that uh, maybe Jason Hotelling didn't do as the offensive Ooh. line coach. Well, he's headed to the Chicago Bears per source. Assistant uh, O-line As coach. an assistant O-line coach. Good luck. Well, yeah, I got nothing bad to say about him. He was nice to me in my passing with him. It's just that sometimes uh, you, you got to go backwards to go forward, and uh, Coach Hotelling should – pick up well uh in in um new york we'll see what happens and coming up after the break we get into a little free agent talk in terms of who is currently here with the titans that could be re-signed who would you like to stick around that's coming up next on rk dub here on 104.5 the zone Are you sick and tired of achy joints, uh, dread the idea of surgery? Nobody likes that. You need to call QC Kinetics today. Hey, it's Kayla Anderson. And listen, the state of healthcare always changing. The old ideas like steroids and surgery, they're not any 
uh, of your only options anymore. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is really transforming lives with innovative non-surgical drug-free treatments that deliver those long-lasting results. So maybe you're feeling, especially this time of year, the knee pain, the back pain, shoulder pain. Maybe you have arthritis from an old injury. Don't let this pain keep you from living your best life. QC Kinetics advanced state-of-the-art treatments harness and direct your body's natural ability to restore and repair that damaged joint tissue. So make 2024 the year you reclaim your mobility. Go ahead and give call, uh, QC Kinetics a call for a free consultation. It's 615-249-4024. Call QC Kinetics now at 615-249-4024.
Welcome back in to RK Dub on this fine morning here in Middle Tennessee. The sun is shining. We're all in a good mood as we uh, are already in hour three. Coming up on three hours. Time is flying by. And that's what happens when there's lots of news to get to. We've talked about the hiring, uh, potential hiring of Denard Wilson. That's what reports are saying, that he will be the defensive coordinator here. We'll continue to get into that a little later in the show. But let's talk about this current roster. And it will look very different this year, as did it last year. But even more turnover, I would expect, Ramon, and... When you look at some of the free agents that are out there on the market, we spoke about that yesterday. Who could they possibly bring in who's out there? Maybe you you spend a little money on a certain guy, like a wide receiver or a cornerback possibly, even an offensive tackle maybe. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the current free agents on this roster right now that you would like to have back, I'm interested to get your take because there is a long list and some of the players highlighting that list, obviously, Obviously, you know, you do have Derrick Henry. I think we all are kind of in agreement that he'll probably move on. But some other names there, um, Danico Autry, Aziz Alshire, Sean Murphy Bunting. You've got Morgan Cox, which I didn't even realize has been the mm-hmm. long snapper here for so long and so solid. Uh, he is a, a free agent. You've got Chris Moore, Nick Westbrook-Akine. A lot of names on here, Ramon, but would you – bring any of these guys back at this point? Man, as you said, it, it it is a long list, and it's a list that you got to be very specific and careful about, Kayla. I've looked at this list. I've tried to take my time through it, and I, I, I want to go backwards before we go forward, and I'd love to hear from my crowd, too, as far as who they would want back. I'm seeing some come through the FNM Bank chat already. We'll get to but but here's how I feel, and I, I want to have this discussion because here's the thing. Picking seven is a hard spot, but it's a great spot to pick at, too. And the only reason I say it's a hard spot is because it's so, Kayla and our our listeners, there's so many different issues that you have to get by. It's easy to say, go get a tackle. Yes, but you also need a center if you don't want to bring back Aaron Brewer. You don't want to spend double-digit millions on a guy from another team, right? We talked about, uh, I think it's Connor Williams yesterday, I think, from Miami. Uh, the center. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I may have his name wrong. The but free agent. Way, the center from Miami, he's a free agent, but he's just going through an ACL injury, correct? Mm-hmm. So if you do go wide receiver, do you go tackle in the second round? This team desperately needs a corner also. If there's a corner that you absolutely love and there's a run on quarterbacks and he quarterbacks and your corner is there, your DB is there, do you take him there too? Because – this team needs a tackle. This team needs a center. This team needs a corner. This team needs a middle linebacker. This team needs a lot of stuff. And then, of course, with the idea and the facts now that you don't have a third-round pick, that's where it becomes super sticky to me. You you see what I'm saying? Yes. So to, to bring back these guys, and the last, uh, I think it was two days ago, I said I almost expect Aaron Brewer to be back because of these reasons. Aaron Brewer has been a guy that that snapped to Will Levis. Um, he'll come in at about five to six million dollars per year, maybe. Okay, maybe lower, maybe higher. Who knows? Uh, and you can probably sign him to a two-year deal or a three-year deal. That's probably two on paper. A lot of people won't like that, but if you trust Brian Callahan and how he can somewhat be offensively productive with a less than offensive line, which is what they had to do in Cincinnati for the last couple of years anyway, you got to think Cincinnati went out and paid thirty-one million dollars this year for Orlando Brown Jr. and they still didn't make the playoffs. So there's no real rhyme or reason to it. I did have up all the. Um, the C, uh the San Francisco 49ers PFF grades. There was three guys on that team that were solid and two that was not holding up their end of it. So when you're asking me what I love to happen, Kayla, or who I want back, if if I am <laughs> – I see D. Goods comment, but he's done with the $2 stake in the f Bank chat. If I can move, and I believe this is a deep class of tackles, right? Yes. If I can go from seven to about 14 or 15, still get my tackle and pick up a third and a fourth round pick, 
Oh my gosh, I, I I can possibly take a chance on bringing back a guy like Sean Murphy Bunting. Then sure, I can bring back Nick Westbrook, Akina, maybe right. Mm-hmm. I can bring back Aziz Alshire if I can do that. But the fact that I think this team needs a really good center moving forward. If you're telling me that that Jackson Powers Johnson is there in the second round, yep. But I also just picked up a tackle in the first round. You need wide receivers. I think they expect T. Higgins to be franchise tagged out of Cincinnati. So where are you going? The guy, if no moves are being made, Kayla, and you're picking at seven, um, I think what makes the most sense, in my opinion, maybe Brewer on a short-term deal. Heck, maybe even do it on a – I don't know what his mark is really going to look like. But if you can do that thing on a two-year deal and you're basically getting one year out of it till you get your draft picks back next year – I can live in a world where Aaron Brewer is your guy. And just to be honest with you also, a lot of people hold PFF, Pro Football Focus, as law <laughs> when it comes down to grades. You I played like the, the position. Guys. I like the guys, okay, as far as PFF goes. I have a relationship with them. But I don't think their metric is is, right. is, is all the way correct. But here's the thing. They actually had Aaron Brewer graded as the highest rated offensive lineman on this squad in the 2023 season. Those are just what people believe. I'm hands off, but I'm with the Aaron Brewer idea right now, Kayla. I'm here to interest yours and maybe Burt's. Yeah, look, I, I mean, there's not a lot of options right now. Center is a tough position if you've not already drafted them. And they're usually the guy that anchors the line and sticks around for a long time. I mean, i.e. Ben Jones was here for so long, it was tough for him to to retire even. And he was really the glue for that offensive line. I think Aaron Brewer, he is a smaller guy, right? And he's going to get knocked for all of that. I think he had his deficiencies last year. That was also a line that was just ever changing. I mean, there was no consistency on that line with injuries, with just bad play overall by specific guys. Um, And look, he wasn't perfect. But when you're looking at all the other needs on this team immediately next year, that might be a guy you have to bring back. Maybe you get another guy in there to compete, but I'm not completely... I'm going to argue with you about that, Ramon, because there are so many other positions you need to sure up, and this draft can go anyway. And you're right. They really do need a third-round pick. I think third-round value is so important, and it just – it's – it's not good to see that they don't have that. So I'm interested to see what the plan is for the draft if they decide to, you know, move down to get an extra pick in that third round. But when I'm looking at the guys currently on this roster, look, I think a lot of us would like to see Danico Autry back just because we've seen him continue to play good football. But he is another year older. Um How much he has left in the tank, I don't know. And depending on what you're willing to give a guy like that in his 30s, uh, we'll have to see because this is a new regime in terms of the coaches. I do see Aziz Alshire coming back um, because I do feel like he was a Rand Carthon guy with the kind of relationship that they had with the Niners. I feel like he could be back. And look, he was a tackling machine for the Tennessee Titans last year. He led the team in tackles, broke some records with that. Um, And with saying that in terms of the defensive backs room, if you do bring back a guy like Sean Murphy bunting, uh, I think there has been good things to his play. There are some things though that, you know, you, you scratch your head at sometimes with him, the consistency maybe, but he would bring some leadership into that room. And I think no matter what, you've got to draft a young cornerback. Uh, there are a lot of them in this draft, too, that I, I'm looking at and saying I would love for the Titans to have. And then when it comes to a wide receiver, I actually think I'd take Chris Moore over NWI at this point. The only reason I say that is he fits possibly better in this Callahan offense than an NWI type of receiver. Chris Moore kind of known for making those big plays this year. Uh, He seems to be at times Johnny on the spot where I could see him uh, fitting in that Callahan offense and you probably could get him for cheap. I'm I'm taking uh, uh, respectfully. I'm taking NWI all day. Okay. Just on the basis that that he man when the ball comes this way he's there and also I'm looking at the age side of it too. According yeah, to Spot Track, 
Uh, NWI is going to come in relatively cheap at two and a half million dollars. So you can probably give him a two for seven or two for eight when you look at what you're going to offer your number three and four and special teams type of guy. So I'm with you on Chris Moore. Chris Moore does get down the field. Uh, there will have to, Kayla, it's so, it's, it's wild. so much. It's almost like cooking without pans right now, right? I know. And here's another question I'm going to throw at you. What about Christian Fulton? He's an undrafted free agent. I think a lot of people unrestricted, un- unrestricted, unrestricted. excuse me, unrestricted yeah. free agent. I think a lot of people out on him just because of the injuries that have happened. I also think now that you look back at it, I don't know if him and Mike Vrabel were seen eye to eye at any point of his career here. Do you take a risk on a guy like this and see if he can develop under a guy like Denard Wilson, who has, you know, the resume of developing these DBs? Yeah, I, that's going to be fascinating, and it does come down to the price. I do believe, and I'll say this too, <laughs> I'm going to say his name, and it's going to start a freaking wildfire probably on Twitter. <laughs> do it! It's, um, it's going to be on Twitter and probably in the FNM Bank chat, man. Shout out to everybody that's watching too uh, and listening to us. But um, Munch, Mike yeah. Munchak, a hell of a coach. Yep. I think everybody knows that. I, I think I got better from Coach Monchak. I think the players around me got better because of Mike Monchak. And I do believe good coaches, if we believe Denard Wilson is that type of coach, can get a lot of good out of his secondary and those type of players. Christian Fulton, if you listen to the people that talk about him, has a lot of good in him. You know what's bad about Christian Fulton, Kayla? What? Listeners? Those injuries. Yep. If if I want to go pay for Christian Fulton, and it says the market value for him is about six point seven million a year. Ideal uh deal for him, which is a bargain still. It's three years, twenty point three million dollars. He'd probably try to get three years uh twenty two or twenty one or something like that, right? That's just how the league is gonna work. There's some give and take in negotiating. The only issue that I have with Christian Fulton is the fact that he can't stay on the field. Okay, I do believe coaches and the right environment. And I promise you guys, when you hear Chad Brinker's conversation on the OTP, you will understand what and how they're trying to go about this, the way they will GPS guys, the way they will track a lot of things that really tries to get the maximum output out of the players on this team. Maybe they benefit more. I don't want to say that the old ways were old, um, but I'm very excited, even as a former player, to see what the new ways look like, if you understand what I'm saying. Like, they, <laughs> there will be a lot. So I don't know if that's Denard Wilson getting the most out of Christian Fulton, but he's a guy that will have a market. He has to just be healthy because there was a stretch of this 2023 season. We didn't mention Christian Fulton out there, and that's because yeah. of the plays that he was making. So players change. Coaches do matter, and I see you guys dropping Mike Munchak name. Yeah, often. I know it's very popular today yeah. in the F and M Bake Chat, and that's because you know what he can do. Well, yeah, he's I mean, solid, listen, right? L- listen to what Darius Slay said about yeah. Denard Wilson. You got to be encouraged by the idea that he said he can talk and teach young players. So, it, <laughs> it's fascinating to see how this will break out. I saw somebody also say this too. I'm hands off on optimism until I see it. That is a fair take to have right there also with this new coaching staff. Yeah, I think that that's where you right now you balance the the emotions, right? And yeah. I think as a fan, you do what you want. You're the fans, right? And you can be as excited as you want because I'll tell you this much. I feel like just talking about this Titans team this upcoming season and we haven't even seen the full staff yet, right? It looks like right. he has just hired his first hire in defensive coordinator Denard Wilson, but you do feel a kind of a new energy. And a lot of times that's refreshing to put your finger on that reset button as a fan base and be like, okay, this is definitely new. And it gives you hope for whoever comes in here, whoever they draft, whoever they sign this year with all the money they have um, in terms of free agents, that it really maybe could work out and it, might not happen at the snap of a finger, but it's starting to look like the the people that you have here that are going to develop. You've got the structure now of the upper management. It looks like it's just a different direction. And I think for a lot of people, that is refreshing to see. 
It is. And um, of course, it's got to work out. It's going to be uh, a lot of changes and, and people moving in and out. I, I will say this just to stand on my point. You ask me a question. I got to give you an answer. Mm-hmm. Right, Kayla? Yep. Uh, if nothing changes as far as moving back in the draft, if nothing changes as far as picking up picks, if nothing changes, I think the the most uh, the, the, the most uh, the, the, the guy I want to bring back <laughs> ain't a fan favorite, but it's probably going to be Aaron Brewer. Yeah. You've stuck to that. And look, I, I wouldn't be surprised, Ramon, if if that's a guy that they bring back. Uh, Money-wise, too, in, just interested to see what he would get, you know? Um, yeah. n- not thinking he's probably the, the, the hottest commodity on the market in terms of centers. But then again, there's not many of them out there. And no. we and, see and that. If, 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 big I F, <laughs> <laughs> if you do get munched, a guy that was uh, somewhat undersized and plays a similar style and has some of the same deficiencies that he hid well and was very strong. Um, if you do get much, big if, I'm going to emphasize that, he's coached the guy, Marquise Pouncey, that honestly, y'all, played at like 285, 290. Truth. Okay. You know firsthand, right? So, yeah, and sometimes may have been lighter than that. So it, it's about technique. It's about Will, it's about knowing your assignment. And anybody that's played for much is going to tell you every day is technique. Every day is your assignment. And um, that's going to save you. So we'll see what happens. Well, I think this is interesting. Uh, Coming up next, interesting trend in college football that might not be good when it comes to keeping quality head coaches around in the game. We'll get into the details. That's coming up next here on RK Dub 104.5 The Zone. It's Ramon Foster for Hiller Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Okay, it's Valentine's season, and love is in the air. Find your perfect match this month at Hiller, okay? You can get a free UV light when you purchase select new HVAC systems from Hiller or free whole home generator surge protection when you buy a new whole home generator. 50% off the scalers when you buy a new tankless water heater. You know how that is, keeping the quality of your water in your house, but you'll never be in love with your home if you find the perfect match at happyhealer.com one of the companies that i trust if you need anything done around your house through the house or through the month of february uh, whether that's plumbing heating cooling or electrical go to happyhealer.com and be sure to tell them that ramon sent you there
Wow, that's a way to bring in this hour with the uh, saxophone. I should say the end of the hour there. Look at that. Robert Walsh just spinning all the hits back here. Welcome back into RK Dub on this fine Thursday morning. Hope you all are doing well as you maybe drive in. Be safe out there. Looks like a beautiful day here in Middle Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Ramon Foster down in Mobile, Alabama, as he continues Senior Bowl coverage for Titans Radio and giving us all the fun tidbits. Uh, Excited to talk a little bit more about that, especially we've got you back in studio tomorrow, so that will be good to catch up on everything. Yeah, yeah, it will be. will be, KK. So, Uh, interesting, Ramon. I was going to get your thoughts on this because – The Green Bay Packers have hired Boston College head coach Jeff Halfley as their new defensive coordinator. And you look at this move, it's not actually as surprising as maybe it used to be. You're like, okay, you're a head coach in college football. What a job. A lot of these guys, you know, that's their goal in life, to become a head coach. And then you see him move to the NFL side and you're moving as a defensive coordinator. Now the pay probably when it comes down to it might be about the same, but a source that tells ESPN a reason for the move is he wanted to go uh, coach college football again for, uh, sorry, go to the league and move on from college football because it's all about football still. And he said, college coaching has become fundraising NIL and recruiting your own team and transfers. There's no time to coach football anymore. Are we seeing a perhaps disturbing trend when it comes to good head football coaches and leaving for the NFL? Yes, 100%, man. These coaches have no lives. I was listening to somebody have a conversation. I don't remember where it was, but I was in the middle of listening to somebody talk about college football, and they were just saying, like, uh, it may have been a PFF conversation where uh, a coach had had only had three Sundays. Like, he only had three Sundays to go to church with his family, Jeez. and that's probably Mother's Day. That's probably Easter, and that was probably like Father's Day or something like that. Imagine that, like family values and and stuff like that, that you don't get an opportunity to just be and have. Like I've seen some coaches that had kids around uh, my kids' age, like 15 and 11, and most of us have kids in sports because sports is a part of our life. They can't make it to their football games, possibly. They can't make it to, especially the summers, if they got summer travel or something like that. Kayla, that – that family and life balance is awesome. I know people, you know, marry wives and have girlfriends and spouses that understand that life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but at some point, the money doesn't matter as much. Oh, just go. Sh- no, it ain't just go shopping. Your kids need to have your presence. And a lot of these coaches have families. Not everybody is a single male or female that's coaching. They have lives that they want to jumpstart and, uh, you know, and, and, and have the ability to, to be involved with them. How am I going to raise Kayla, your nephew yeah. or Bert's cousin, and I can't even raise my own kids, you know? Mm-hmm. And that sounds, oh, you just being selfish. You know what you signed up for. Screw that. Like, you got to have a life. That's why we talked about Tom Moore, you know, 50-plus years, <laughs> uh, however long he's been in the league. Um, that's a, a crazy amount of, of responsibility. Yeah, I mean, and the kids that you're coaching in college, I mean, they're young, right? Yep. And they haven't developed <laughs> Robert Walsh just po- popped up a a picture of our <laughs> our 85 year old stud. You talked about him. He brought him up. He's man. Such you, a stud. If you say his name, he shows up. I know. He and I'm loving up. every moment of it. And you know what? I wish he would go co- coach some of these young men in college football. They would not live a day with that guy. <laughs> yeah, right. They'd be like, who is this guy? Old school. But you're right. I mean, there's so much more that goes into coaching now, right? There's so much more in terms of money. This athlete, uh, in terms of the new age athlete, is a lot different than it was in the past, even like five years ago. And so you're also seeing that now you're not only recruiting for high school, you're recruiting to try to keep, at the end of a season, guys from going into the transfer portal. So it, it's like you're having to balance so much more. And look, a lot of these guys are making a lot of money, but I think it's, it's a lot tougher of a job than it used to be, Robert Walsh. 
For sure. And and another thing with these coaches, if they're still around, they've obviously been able to adapt their coaching style because the league has a way of pushing the dinosaurs out. If, you, if you're not able to adapt and change, the league will get rid of you. Yeah. So the, the fact that he's still stuck around that far uh, is kudos to him for as a coach. Yeah, it, it's one of those things, too, that I think there's going to have to at some point be some more structure when it comes to the NIL. E- even the transfer portal just really laying out some of those laws and, and rules. And we're seeing it right now. And at eight, uh, actually at 920, we're going to talk to Teresa Walker of the Associated Press because she's really dug deep into this whole Tennessee versus the NCAA, uh, something that really might hurt the NCAA when it comes down to it. Uh, because they just don't have their ducks in a row. And I think at some point we're going to have to start seeing some structure for NIL, for the transfer portal, or we're going to continue to see some of these college coaches leave for the NFL. I don't disagree with you. And I do enjoy the way Tennessee has shown their teeth Yeah, in, in the face of these threats, though. There, nothing like banding a big group of people together against a common threat. Everybody's <laughs> tired of the NCAA. So I, I'm so happy that, that everybody has uh, – Virginia came in. Yeah. It feels like a lot of these t- schools are going to have to say, well, you know they're going to come for us next. We might as well band together, band our resources together, and figure this out. And that's why we talked to Brian Rice yesterday and asked him the question – is now the time to get ahead of it. Like if you are a program right now and maybe you haven't been hit with those violations, right? Or the NCAA hasn't been down your throat. That doesn't mean that they're not going to be. There's a good chance that they're out for their next program. And if you are a program right now in college football, I think you band together with, you know, Tennessee and and what Virginia is doing as a state and say, we're getting ahead of it. Because we're not going to let the NCAA come in here and push us around. Around, I think it's the college football world against the NCAA right now. We're, we'll see what happens. And again, we'll talk to Teresa Walker more about this coming up at 920. But coming up next, we're going to reset some of the headlines. Obviously, the Tennessee Titans have what looks to be their new defensive coordinator in Denard Wilson. Plus, hmm, a little tidbit here. Uh, could the Titans offensive coordinator position be filled here in the next 24 hours we'll discuss that coming up next on rk dub in the final hour on 104.5 the zone Hey, it's Will Bowling here for my friends at Lee Company. Hey, are you looking to upgrade a damaged garage door or better maintain consistent temperatures in your garage? Well, you need to contact the professionals at Lee Company today. They're expert technicians. They've got you covered for all of your garage door services. And right now, they've got this great offer for you as well. Listen to this. You can get up to $750 off a replacement and installation of a new garage door. That's right, $750 off. Remember this phone number for all of your needs at your home. 615-567-1000. Whatever your to-do list looks like, Lee Company's here to help, and that includes your damaged garage door. 615-567-1000, or visit them online at leecompany.com slash promotions to take care of this great deal. And take care of your garage door. $750 off, 615 615- Five six seven one thousand. Get up to seven fifty off a replacement and installation of a new garage door. Online at LeeCompany.com. That's Lee Company. All you need.
Nine o'clock. Good morning from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm Robert Walsh. One head coaching opening left after yesterday. The Seahawks go from the oldest coach in the league to the youngest coach, hiring Baltimore's defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald. McDonald's defense was first in sacks, takeaways, and points per game last year. That is the first defense in NFL history to do so. Now coaching as it impacts the Titans, one in, one out. Terrell Williams, who had been at coaching at the Senior Bowl this week, has taken a position in Detroit to coach the defensive line, but the Titans have found their defensive coordinator. Denard Wilson spent last season coaching DBs in Baltimore, but has been coaching around the league since 2012, coaching in Philly, New York, St. Louis with the Rams. He also spent three years in the Bears' front office as a pro scout before joining the coaching ranks. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5. The Zone. Everybody put those fours up. That is right. It is the final hour here on this great Thursday morning of Ramon, Kayla, and Will. The sun is shining here in Middle Tennessee, and we're loving every minute of it. We're also loving the fact that we're brewed up by 8th and Roast every single morning, locally owned and operated by lifelong friends turned business partners who have designed local shops all over the city as a way to feel welcomed, connected, and a part of a community. You can go and get your own retail bag at Publix, Kroger, and Whole Foods. We have had such a fun show, and we still have coming up at 920, Teresa Walker, our queen, uh, of course, of the Associated Press. She covers everything when it comes to sports here in Tennessee, and she's really dive, or dove deep, I should say, into the whole Tennessee versus NCAA situation. We'll get her take on that Alongside our 11-year NFL veteran down in Mobile, Alabama, kind of covering the Senior Bowl, it is Ramon Foster. Yay, yay. We've got Robert Walsh uh, producing a great show, as always, Behind the Glass. I'm Kayla Anderson, Will Bowling, with some days off. He is in London enjoying uh, what will be some good soccer over the weekend. Excited for him with that. And we continue our discussion. The big headline today well, the Tennessee Titans look to have hired their new defensive coordinator, according to several sources. Uh, Denard Wilson coming over from the Baltimore Ravens before that, spending time, of course, in Philadelphia. Uh, he was also a top candidate for the D.C. jobs uh, with the Giants, Packers, and Rams this season. But the Titans have landed him. And Ramon Foster, this looks like the more and more we have talked about this today, this looks like it could be a really solid hire for the Titans. It does on, on uh, paper and face value for what we know, man. And I've seen coaches go to good play. Or I've seen coaches get hired at other places that end up having bad experiences. There, i.e., Arthur Smith, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that, that's why I'm, I'm telling. You, that's why for me, I think with everybody. Um, I'm a, I'm a hold my excitement back. I am excited about it. I am very optimistic about what Denard Wilson can do and coach Callahan, both of them. If I can be honest with you, I, I am uh, excited for what they can do. It's a matter of what they will do here with this team and the amount of time that they will have to do the things that they want to accomplish, getting the right players, all of that matters. Um, but you got to be excited for the projection of this team moving mm -hmm. forward though. And I think a big thing that you brought up earlier on in the show when we were discussing Denard Wilson is just some of the development uh, that he's had with his secondary players. I know Darius Slay of the Philadelphia Eagles uh, was very boisterous coming out and saying he wishes he could have gotten the de defensive coordinator job. 
Uh, Darius Slay also retweeting this morning, uh, super excited that he looks to have gotten the job here in Tennessee. And under Wilson, look, you look at the numbers. The Ravens' pass defense ranked sixth in the NFL. Uh, Kyle Hamilton, who's just been solid as it gets, uh, earned first-team All-Pro honors this past year. And then fellow safety Geno Stone, seven INTs, ranked second in all of football. So he's clearly doing a good job with some of the development of players. And I think there's been some questions in the FNM Bank chat, Ramon, when it comes to how do you really know what you're getting out of a, a position coach now that's going to take on the title of defensive coordinator? You, well, these coaches all know each other. That's that's the first thing is the ones that get elevated to be coordinators from, from position coach, they already have a track record. They always have uh, – they already have guys that have vouched for them and know that they're going to be those types of players. The same way that we look at Sean McVay, right? Everybody was looking at this – 34, if I'm not mistaken, 34-year-old uh, man become a head coach and look how that paid off for the Rams. So there's no real secrets around the league. It's all about opportunity and where you fit with the teams that are looking to hire you. But you listen to the players, you look at the development of the players on the field, and you look at the results. And when you have those conversations, when you bring those coaches in and they sell you on that, and this this is the thing about it too, coaches and players know bull crap. They do. Mm-hmm. You can smell it they a mile away, They can call away, out the Kayla. BS, yeah. You can call it out. That's one thing I will say. When, when you listen to players um, talk after the fact, during those moments, they will give you all the answers you need. They will tell you exactly what you need to know. It might not be direct, but you hear it the same way, and I'll reference Wesley. Wesley Woolyard, right? Yep. Like The stuff that he was saying, he couldn't say as a current player. You have to be at a point to where he said certain things before, and these players talk, hearing Darius Slay and a bunch of other guys that have vouched for um, for, for Coach Wilson is one of those things that it resonates, and you want some of that before somebody else come and take it too. Yeah, and that's a great point right there. Uh, and, look, we saw it firsthand with the Wesley Woodyard interview. I mean, it took him a certain time, and obviously not having Vrabel here to really come out and share some of those stories and you're right i mean players are what matters and that's what brian callahan has made clear with what he tries or what he will try to bring here is look i'm gonna listen to these players and sometimes you know i I won't take that advice but sometimes i will and that's the biggest thing i think we're gonna see a shift in with this coach and this coaching staff the guys that he's hiring they also uh are listening to their players and the feedback is important to them so yeah it'll be interesting to see um when denard wilson is officially announced by the titans i'm sure that will come here soon uh meanwhile we are wondering well who will be the next offensive coordinator for the Tennessee Titans. Justin Mello, who does a great job of the draft network, uh, put out a tweet about 20 minutes ago saying, hiring Eric Studisville to be the Titans OC makes the most sense. I could see that move being finalized soon. Studisville would add much needed experience to Callahan's staff. He's also grounded in the run game, which would provide balance. And Ramon, we've discussed Studisville, um, who is obviously very heavy with his background with running backs, currently uh, was with the Miami Dolphins as an associate head coach and a running backs coach. I could see this being the case, especially you've got a pass kind of heavy coordinator minded guy in Brian Callahan, maybe pairing that up with a guy who knows a lot about the ground game. Yeah, for sure. And there has to be balance. That's one thing that uh, coach head coach now Brian Callahan has said about his squad and his coaching staff and what they, how they operated in Cincinnati was everybody puts their hand in the pile and contribute. And if he's a pass centric quarterback whispering type of head coach, and a play caller, right? Then you got to be able to have some balance. I've always heard coaches say, I don't care what good ideas come from right. as long as they help us win. And it seems like that's going to be the approach of Coach Callahan. So if he does bring in Studsville, like you look at this situation and say, well, he's getting somebody that's considered better at the run game than he, he is himself. Mm-hmm. It also looks at one of those situations to me to where it, the balance, right? The balance of voices that the players have. And if it's not just – me, as far as, let's say, Coach Callahan been judge, jury, executioner of all things that's supposed to work, 
I'll say this. Some coaches have dumb ideas. Some coaches are not as smart as other players. I mean, not as smart as other uh, coaches are on other staffs. And that's why we have those conversations. Oh, you just got out coached that week or coach got out coached the entire year. Well, if I got other people that can contribute good ideas to me, right, then that's yeah. something that I myself will benefit from. Coach Callahan will get the lion's share of the play calling. But when it boils down to how they formulate it throughout the week, that comes from different departments. The O-line coach, hey, coaches, uh, the tight end coach, let's say it specifically, coach, this is a bad matchup for us this week. We're going against a beast off the edge, and I don't know if the tight ends can block them this week. Well, that's why you have other coaches inside of your building to allow you to flourish in other ways. It may not be inside, I mean, outside zone. It may be more inside zone. Are you branching out and running more dime and nickel run sets? Mm -hmm. Like, there's so much that goes into it to where when you're open minded and collaborative, there it (laughs) is. Hey, when you're collaborative and everybody's pulling the rope in the same exact way. You, you, you get good benefits out of that. Yeah, it's definitely working together. It seems to be the theme of development. That seems to be something that this new staff is interested in doing. Uh, Studisville also, just so you know, guys, because I know a lot of the question, and we've gotten it a lot in the f and Bank chat this morning. We'd love for you guys always to, to chime in, and you can also call 615-737-1045 to get involved in the conversation. But a little bit older, right? A little more experience when it comes to a guy that could be possibly being your next OC because this staff will have a lot of young guys on um, staff. I mean, that's yeah. the the feeling I'm getting, and that's why we feel like it's so refreshed. But uh, 56 years old, Ramon, and, and like yeah. I said, he's been everywhere. Buffalo Bills, Denver Broncos, most recently, though, with Miami. Uh, and, and real quick, if they are going to bring in somebody from Miami, we got uh, a question in the uh, F&M Bank chat. Shoot. Emmett asked a question, did, did the Dolphins have a running game? I, Fair. And see, that's the thing that comes behind, watching them throw through the air and yeah. their, their, their receivers and stuff like that make all the plays. I'm going to just drop uh, this. They had the number one rushing attack as far as yards in the NFL this year. They ranked fourth as far as total touchdown. Uh, no, 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 sorry. They had the number six overall rushing uh, attack in the NFL. They were number one in touchdowns and number one in yards attempted throughout the year. They had a, if I'm not mistaken, and Raheem Moster, Oof, uh, who's 31 years old, accumulated 1,000 yards. And behind him, Devon Achan also had 800 yards. Raheem Moster had 18 rushing touchdowns, and Devin Achan had eight touchdowns on the ground. While both of these guys also incorporated in their pass sets, I mean their passing game too. So, again, I know <laughs> you do a little bit of a deep dive with this type of stuff, and you realize, yeah, these teams that say they're pass heavy and going through the air – The genesis and the base behind all of them is establishing the run. Yeah, absolutely. And most are, by the way, uh, most rushing touchdowns in the NFL with 18. Like, phew. And you said he was 31? to come here. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Exactly. And again, this is still something uh, just, this was just put out here by Justin Mello. He just feels like there could be possibly a, a, a move in terms of finalizing a deal with him. But we do not know. This is... Every minute, I feel like we're getting new information and the hiring cycle, even when it comes to hiring your own staff, there's new information out there all the time. But we wanted to give you the latest when it comes to uh, everything when it comes to this uh, staff under Brian Callahan. So when we come back, though, switching gears a little, and I am interested to see what Teresa Walker thinks about uh, the hire of Denard Wilson We'll see what she has to say, but we want to dive deeper into the whole situation that's going on with Tennessee and the NCAA. Teresa Walker does excellent work. She's done a lot of work on this and will explain some of those details that we're looking for. That's coming up next on Ramon, Kayla, and Will here on 104.5 The Zone.
Welcome back into RK Dub on this Thursday morning. Always appreciate when we are joined by the queen herself and she covers everything when it comes to sports in Tennessee. It is Teresa Walker of the Associated Press. T, are you enjoying the sunshine just as much as I am? All I see is a sliver in the window. Uh, I want to enjoy more of it. I, I made myself get out and you know take a quick break, walk 40 minutes between dealing with Tennessee and the NCAA latest developments and before going downtown for hockey last night. And, and yeah, it's, it, I will be outside today because it's like I need some vitamin D badly. Yes, many of us do. Uh, Teresa, first of all, before we get into the latest with Tennessee and the NCAA, I did want to ask you, it looks like the Tennessee Titans um, have their first hire under Brian Callahan and defensive coordinator Denard Wilson. Wanted to get your take on what you thought about this. Well, it's very interesting. I mean, let's face it. Uh, it, it it's, it's, it's for somebody who covered the Ravens and Titans in 99, 2000, and, and, oh, yeah, that playoff game in 2008, and then, yes, the most recent one, it, it's like, hmm, interesting. But you look, you know, it, it's all about who you know, where you've been, and, there, you know, there's some, there's some ties between Rand and, and Wilson going back in the day. But let's look at that defense. Baltimore's defense this year was just about, I mean, it was about the best in the NFL. And uh, that secondary was very, very impressive. And, you know, this team's got a lot of money to spend. And this guy has got some players uh, who are going to be free agents who very well might want to come play for him. So at, at this point, I, I mean, based on the production that the Ravens put on the field the defensively this last year, I mean, you see Mike McDonald going to Seattle. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what makes people hireable is when you have serious production on the field. And that's exactly what Denard Wilson's uh, unit did for the Ravens. So it's, at this point, it's like, go, baby. Do you like the fact that, you know, there seems to be maybe a little bit of youthfulness being injected in, in what could be this this Titans roster and, and, or, excuse me, coaching roster? Obviously, we don't have a lot of the hires yet, but it looks like there is going to be a lot of youth. At some point, do you feel like there needs to be a veteran on either side of the ball when it comes to, you know, some of these coaches or coordinators? Well... I'm sure that they'll have some veterans in there, but, uh, you know, the, the thing is having guys who can coach. And, and the one thing that's funny is every time they keep updating a list of the, you know, now so-and-so is the youngest coach in the NFL <laughs> among head coaches. Have you noticed how many of these lists keep forgetting Brian Callahan? He's 39. Yeah. I mean, and, and yes, uh, that makes me feel really old. Um, considering that I'm old enough to be his mama. Uh, but it's like, and, and I, yes, I'm covering kids that are old enough I could be their grandmama. So, you know, I once asked Derek Henry, please, I, I know you were raised right, but it's, don't call me Miss Teresa or ma'am. And, he, and he's like, yes, ma'am. And so, but, but age matters. It, 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 it's nice to have that, that, that experience drawn sometimes. But, you know, sometimes it comes down to being, you know, young. And, again, youth is in vogue right now for, for the, the head coaching positions and, yes, for the coordinator spot. And, you know, we'll see who rises to the occasion. Sometimes you hire that hot young kid and they don't meet the moment. They're not able to raise. But let's see what the rest of this coaching staff ends up looking like. Because, yeah, I do think it's good to have a couple of old heads around uh, who, who knows some things and, you know, because, you know, love you, Rand, but you've been in the building barely a year yourself. So, you know, Chad Brinker, who's now the president of football ops, he didn't, he didn't join this franchise until February a year ago. So it's like, there's a, you know, they, and now it depends, you, you know, you, it might be that once this draft is over, Rand Carthon keeps a lot of those scouts. Well, th this scouting staff, there's a lot of these guys who've been around for a bit so, but we see the news, you know, coming out that, you know, Terrell Williams is going to be going to Detroit. He's certainly one of those guys who's had a lot of experience in this game. So let's just wait and see what the rest of this staff looks like. Uh, Brian Callahan, Denard Wilson, they're definitely young. Um, but those are just the, you know, those are just the first real two pieces we know at this point. 
uh, good morning, Teresa. I was about to mess with you and say good morning, Miss Teresa, but I don't want to make you feel that. <laughs> um, yeah, don't make me feel older until I have more coffee, Ramon. I just needed a laugh out of you, Teresa. I just needed that laugh. That keeps you young, right there. Okay, that's why I'm always Amen. having a good time. Um, with that being said, though, too, um, you, you got to somewhat formulate your building and build and mold your building into what your product is, also. This Tennessee Titans team is going to be relatively young with a young quarterback, with young skill players, and I think it's it's apparent that that's what they're trying to push out is these kids are coming out of college uh, young. They're, they're trying to train them up and be a certain type of way too. Do you think that's kind of played into the fact that, hey, the game in college has changed so much. we got to be able to communicate and develop these guys uh, because that's one question too on the college level. What is the development like coming out of college? And it seems to be that's their angle so far with these hires well absolutely i mean that's that's the thing how do you connect with some of these guys well when you're close in age to them i mean i mean it certainly worked for the rams right when sean mcveigh for the longest time was the youngest coach in the nfl and you look at i mean he's got a super bowl ring so obviously it doesn't hurt although it is kind of funny that the one guy he won you know the quarterback he won that super bowl ring with was a veteran in matthew stafford but it doesn't hurt to be able to connect with guys. I mean, you know, that's the thing. You want buy-in, right? I mean, your experience in, in the league, doesn't it, does it help when you've got a guy who is closer in age that, you know, maybe can, can connect with you in, in some fashion that, you know, when, when you have to be tough on a guy. And we've all had bosses who, you know, that it's called constructive criticism for a reason. But if, if you feel somebody's making a connection with you, Sometimes you hear it better, and it doesn't, you know, it's like you don't get all mad. I don't know about you, but my son doesn't like to listen to me sometimes, you know, and, and, and my advice, as good as it is, it doesn't, you know, others will listen to it, but he won't. So, you know, if you've got somebody closer in age, you can connect, whether it's music, whether it's a TV show, whether it's a, you know, some whatever it is, language. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm old enough that, you know, when I go to dab a guy up, uh, I don't know how to do that, you know. So it's like it's little things like that. You want you want to make a good connection with somebody, so that so that they will listen what they are trying to teach you to do. And I think that's a huge part of it. And Teresa, speaking of 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 uh, dapping somebody up and you know connections, why does it seem like the NCAA and it's not just a Tennessee thing? Uh, but why does it seem like the NCAA has a disconnection with NIL colleges and attacking Tennessee and possibly other universities, too, as we get to this Tennessee uh, lawsuit right now? Well, it is funny, isn't it, that, you know, last summer they're literally praising, the Committee on Infractions literally praising Tennessee for setting a standard that others should follow in cooperation uh, with an, an, uh, an investigation. I mean, Dondi Plowman was heavily criticized when she said we brought them in early. I mean, Tennessee provided because they were able to clone the phones of some of the people that were fired, and they fired 10 in January of 21, including Jeremy Pruitt, but they were able to clone the phones. They, they had text messages. That's how they were able to help document everything. That's why for all the people mad that Tennessee didn't get a postseason ban and it, an $8 million fine and scholarship reduction, literally considering what was going on, a tap on the, the wrist, that, you know, the reason they were mad, well, it's because Tennessee cooperated. But in this instance, you know, the, the NCAA has done everything possible, and it's a member-run organization. So let's remember that. The universities are the NCAA's bosses, essentially. They help set the rules. But, you know, for every time you've got people wanting to go look at Tennessee, you've got a Texas A&M saying, well, we don't want them looking at us. Well, you know, it, it, it's a fun part of how tough do the rules need to be and getting everybody on the same page. I mean, it, it, it's, the NCAA has been whistling and its membership have been whistling past the, the graveyard, so to speak, of, of dealing with name, image, and likeness. Why? What's the big elephant in the room that they haven't wanted to address? They don't want to be treating athletes as employees. And if they start, if schools start paying them, then they are literally employees. And that's the challenge. And Charlie Baker, the new president, essentially has, you know, in December proposed, you know, to creating a new Division One level where 
schools were paying athletes of certain sports. And so it's like, that's the challenge. That's what makes this, this, you know, discussion that NCAA had with Tennessee officials on Monday kind of stunning because it, these rules have been constantly changing. I went through the exhibits attached to the lawsuit filed by the Tennessee AG and the Virginia AG yesterday. Mm-hmm. And, you know, part of that exhibit, the, the ever-changing name, image, and likeness landscape with their rules and, you know, they, they, they're trying to retroactively, as far as Tennessee, with Nico Ayama Layada, they're trying to retroactively say, and they did this a few months after the Nico deal came out, was, uh, you know, and signed with Spire Sports, the volunteer group. You know, it's like, well, wait a minute. If you sign, we're going to treat these collectives as boosters. And it's like, just hold on a minute. Wait a minute. Nico approved, and, and the statement from uh, the attorney on behalf of the Spire Group and the Vol, Vol Group made it very clear. They did their deal with Nico Ayama Leava under California state law. And by the way, state legislature stepped in when the NCAA just kept dragging its feet and refusing to put in rules to cover this new area. And, and, and so, you know, they made their deal early. And then the NCAA comes back and says, you know what? We're gonna, anybody who's done this, we're treating you as a booster. That you know, it's like cha- talk about change. I mean, it'd be like playing a football game, and all of a sudden, an official comes out on the field and says, "You know what? We're going to start calling this this way now. So watch out. C- we're coming through." So it's 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 you know, the NCAA in their statement, and they responded yesterday. They rarely ever say anything until until for, you know, forget notice allegations being issued or anything like that. They wait until like after the Tennessee situation last summer, all the punishment was handed out. They handed, handed down a rare statement yesterday talking about Wild Wild West. Well, they are as much to blame as anybody because the, the, they've been changing the rules. They let the state legislature step in and set up their own rules, which is why, you know, product may vary. You know, that, that, that line you hear sometimes in commercials, you know, depending on what happens in your state, well, that's what that's what Tennessee and Tennessee was one of the very first universities to go the collective route and, and have and they've got over 115 athletes in different sports signed with the ball group. And it's like now they're coming in trying to say, you know, like 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 a janitor at the back with a dustpan trying to clean up. And, they're, you know, they've, they've gone after Florida. They've you know, they're the investigation into FSU. They're going after some big names. Well, are they going to go after Texas A and M? I mean, do we forget mm-hmm. that number one recruiting class? Right. And, and Walter Nolan, Knoxville native, had an IG post that was you know posted and then deleted, saying, "Read your contract." So it, it just <laughs> feels like. And, and Charlie Baker, you know, they hired a politician to be the president of the NCAA, and you know he's trying to he's begging Congress last month for help in, in, for antitrust protection. Because this isn't the first lawsuit they're facing. I think they're facing five others mm. also going after the Sherman Act light, in light of the Austin uh, decision. And, guys, that was, has the Supreme Court ever been unanimous on anything in our lifetime? They were 9-0 saying, you know, NCAA, you got, you got stuff to clean up. And they, j- and they still are trying to run out the clock. And, and, and that's the problem, folks. Teresa Walker of the Associated Press joining us this morning on RKW. So... In a nutshell, what could be the timeline on something like this? I mean, you just named uh, there are several lawsuits against them right now. And obviously, with the attorney generals of Tennessee and Virginia filing an antitrust lawsuit against the NCAA yesterday, what do you see in terms of the timeline of this playing out? Well, once you get into court, it all depends on on the motions, right? And how quickly, you know, how do you get a judge that's moving quickly on something? Are you doing, you know, or, you know, you, you, hey, we can, you know, it's easy once you get into the court landscape to delay, 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 mm-hmm. delay, yep. and that can be a big issue. So that's, that's, that's the thing that we have to monitor at this point. Um, that's, the, it, I mean, it's the NCAA. Look how long it took from the firing of Jeremy Pruitt, January of 21. And they finally finish up the investigation, the Committee of Infractions, and that was all settled last July of 23. So that was two and a half years. And that felt like it was expedited. Why? Because Tennessee cooperated. Um, that's the issue. We just don't know. You know, if Tennessee, 
And by taking it into the court landscape, that adds yet another thing on top of this. So, uh, you know, do they try to work out a settlement and say, you know, and, and again, the NCAA is trying to do new rules as we speak. So uh, when it comes to Division One athletes, that's the, that's the craziest thing in the world, right? So yeah. let's, it, it's, I wish I could give us a timeline, but let's put it this way. I'll be checking a certain court website probably <laughs> every morning uh, to see if there have been new motions filed in this because, let's put it this way, I forgot to turn my phone off on vibrate, and when that lawsuit got filed yesterday, Thank goodness to my uh, my colleague, Ralph Russo, who got a copy of that before I was ready to wake up yesterday morning. I'll be honest. Call Teresa, court reporter, too. Add that to her, her list. Uh, Teresa, and look, all the stuff we're discussing right now, I think this is a big reason why we're seeing a trend of college coaches going to the NFL, even if it's going from a head coach like Jeff Halfley of Boston College, now the Green Bay Packers' new defensive coordinator. Is this going to be the future of what we see with maybe losing some of these good head coaches unless they get some sort of structure in place for all of this? Well, that's the thing. I mean, for so many years, you, the talk has been about NFL coaches. Ooh, whenever their alma mater has an opening, they're going to go back. What incentive, you know, when you've worked in the NFL, what incentive is there to go to the, to the insanity? I mean, college football with the portal and, I mean, all college sports right now, uh, but particularly football with the dual signing periods. I mean, we've got another one coming up next week, right, I mm-hmm. think, um, which is insane. And, it, you know, it's a non-ending 365, 24-7 situation, and, you know, you used to talk about burnout at the NFL level, you know, coaches, you know, getting four hours sleep, staying in their office, things like that, dick for meal, you name it. And now it's on the college level because how do you change up and keep up with a landscape that keeps changing every single day almost? So, I mean, you know, trying to keep up with it. I don't, I don't, if I'm a, if I'm a coach, I'm going to the pro game. I don't yeah. care what sport I'm in. Teresa, I don't want to say Dondi Plowman chumped uh, the NCAA publicly, right? But it did come off strong. It did have a lot behind it. Also, a lot of weight behind her statement she released on Twitter. And so did Spires uh, lawyers also. With that being said, and they're publicly going back at the NCAA, what powers do they actually possess, Teresa, in your humble opinion? Well, here's the thing. The NCAA, I mean, this lawsuit from Tennessee and Virginia may not be the thing that, you know, it it, it topples the NCAA, but it is absolutely chipping away. And, again, I go back to the fact that it's the universities themselves, it's the presidents, the chancellors who are running this organization. And Dondi, in that flamethrower of a letter, I mean, this is the woman that, you know, it was criticized for working with them. And then, and then she went at them. I mean, you know, that was the letter. It's like, uh, let's put it this way. I don't want a letter ever like that sent to me because, I mean, she pulled out the thesaurus and she went on them and basically said, called them out as failing at the NCAA level. And she's a chancellor. so she, and, and she made clear that she and her AD, Danny White, tried to meet with Charlie Baker in December and he refused. So it's like, wait a minute, do you work for us? Or do we work for you? And that, you know, when when you're having, when you get to that point of a relationship, it ain't good. So, uh, I mean, the the NCAA, you know, they're trying to change, but the change may not be coming fast enough. I mean, the NCAA, they're not in charge of the college football playoffs. So even if they were to try to punish Tennessee, does, does the college football playoff system, do they look at that and say, yeah, we'll abide by that. We're not going to let Tennessee in. Or do they say, you know what? And, and they may very well do that this year. They, you know, if Tennessee is in the top 12 team and they're playing, you know, is the college football playoffs going to say, you know what, a couple of years from now say, well, we'll vacate that appearance. You know, what, that we, we, you know they, may, they may say in their statement that it's, you know, it's the wild, wild west right now. Anything could happen because the landscape is changing under our feet as we speak. You don't mess with Don D. Plowman, and you don't mess with the Queen, Teresa Walker. Always appreciate you and the insight you bring, Teresa. Enjoy that sunshine today. 
Oh, baby, I, you know I am. And let's all go get some caffeine and some vitamin D. Thank you, guys. Love it, T. Have a great day. All right, Yelty. that's that's it. We're going to wrap up the show. When we come back, we have an update on the Tennessee Titans' new stadium. That's coming up next on RK Dub here on 104.5 The Zone.
finishing up the funk, the good funk here on Ramon, Kaylin, Will as we wrap up the show. Uh, really fun show today. Some great takes from uh, obviously Ramon Foster, who has left us for some senior bowl duties. He'll wrap up there in Mobile today. He'll be back in studio with us tomorrow. Robert Walsh will be out, uh, Will Bowling. So it'll be a. Uh, Kayla Ramon and I believe Jackson, Jackson holding down the fort. Jackson is filling in. You were Jackson talk- Jackson. You were talking about the Senior Bowl. Uh, Jordan Reed, Jordan Reed on Twitter, uh, just put out a list of players who are no longer at the Senior Bowl. Whoa! Uh, players, whether they uh, whether they feel like they've proved enough, they didn't want to get injured in the game, workouts. Notably, uh, two wide receivers, Roman Wilson from Michigan yep. and Ricky Pearsall, your favorite from Florida. Ooh, that kid. I swear I, that does not surprise me, Robert Walsh, the kid who had his his mouthpiece hanging out all season with shorts out there. Look, he's talented. I won't take that away from him, but he he rubs me the wrong way. You are you are not a fan of Pierce Hall. I'm if not, he ends up in Tennessee, we're gonna have I'm to gonna punch him out. <laughs> You're gonna first, first meet him. <laughs> I've been waiting to do this for a long time, I'm buddy. Punch that piece out of your mouth, right? No, but that's interesting, and I always wonder. Bert, like, is that a is that a good look? I don't know if you look too much into it because you're right. A lot of them look at it as don't want to get hurt, not going to play in the game. But some GMs, some coaches might look at that like, huh, I don't know if I like that. Well, if you look at last year, uh, Dewan Jones yep. out of Ohio State felt like he proved enough large body, and it Big did boy. not bode well for him in the draft, fell all the way to the fourth round. Uh, to the Cleveland Browns. So sometimes, like, perception on Twitter and perception to scouts are two completely different things. And while he did impress uh, he did. a lot of people on Twitter with with his his, his size, his prowess, uh, did not impress scouts enough to go in the top 100 picks. No, and look, he had, when he was healthy, he had actually a, a pretty decent season up there in Cleveland. Obviously, Bill Callahan uh, did a great job with kind of developing him up there, but you're right. It didn't look good in terms of how he maybe dropped um, on those draft boards. So that will be interesting. Uh, the big news from today looks like the Titans have uh, hired, and it's not official yet, so we'll wait to hear that word here uh, in the next uh, day or so. But Denard Wilson uh, looks to be the next defensive coordinator here. Uh, interesting also, you pointed out, Bert, that it looks like uh, Ejiro Evero is going to be staying with Dave Canales there in Carolina. So that's a potential 2025 head coaching candidate that could could be on the market next that's year. That's kind of crazy, too, to uh, for somebody to hold over from the other staff and hold a position that's that prominent. Yeah. Uh, it just speaks volumes to what Dave Canales could do. Uh, in that. For, and I don't know if you saw this yesterday when they introduced him. They had almost a Rand Carthon-type hype video. He came in the front door. David Tepper's there with his chest hair all out, <laughs> ready to see him. And it just feels like such a long time since the Panthers have had a young, energetic coach, maybe a young Ron yeah. Rivera who wasn't even that young. But to have somebody that energetic, that cool, uh, it speaks volumes for him to be able to retain Evero. Yeah, that was, again, Ramon Foster's pick for becoming the head coach here in Tennessee and ended up getting a head coaching job. Really excited to see what he does. He was with the Seahawks for a while, so always loved what he did there. And I know that uh, the Buck Rising show, Lucas Panzeca coming up next, they'll share a little bit more on this, but it looks like Nissan State the groundbreaking ceremony actually going to be set for February 29th. So at the end of the month, there's going to be some guest speakers on hand to discuss the new stadium. Uh, the event is actually open to guests. That will start at 1 p.m. Central. So exciting that groundbreaking, crazy enough, guys, right around the corner. But a huge show tomorrow, Kayla. Oh, I my hate goodness. I'm going to miss this. You guys got Andy Staples. You've got uh, Kevin uh, Kevin Clark coming in. Of ESPN. Uh, so you, a lot of good guests tomorrow, and I, I would not miss it. Yeah, we've also got Brent Hubb. So he always drops some little nuggets along the way. But as for today, really appreciate everybody who joined the show. Coach Mack, our favorite coach down at the Senior Bowl, holding it down. Teresa Walker, always bringing it. Appreciate uh, them. Appreciate you guys, as always. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you back for a Friday edition of RK Dub.